Almost heaven. Jesus Christ. West Virginia. Is so rude. Two minutes late. Can't believe he's wasting all of our time. I want to be. Three. Three minutes late. Do you know the hourly fees that this room would incur? Oh, wait, no. He's trying to talk, but we can't hear him. <laughs> no, we uh, don't hear Set a push to talk. Go into settings and set a push to talk. Go into the configure and make sure that you have the proper audio device selected. Ah, that's the one. Mine always defaults to my fucking real tone rocksmith cable. Like, yeah, that's what I want to communicate with. Mine defaults to a dumb jack that has nothing plugged in. It's great. Thanks, defaults. I would use uh, right alt key as you push the talkie. Um, Blake, are you going to sign up to JW's uh, classes? Oh seminar? my god, dude. I read that entire fucking thing out loud to my wife and was like, Mr. Hodel has permanently exited the conversation. <laughs> she fucking spit <laughs> milk out her nose. <laughs> dude, like... so stupid. I, you guys should be hearing me now. Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Now we got you. Uh, party I had, people! The, yeah, hey, what's up, guys? What's up, party people? This <laughs> is Chris DeRose. I am in the Dragon's Den today. We are going to de-risk the Bitcoin question. I wish I had a, a better topic for you all today, but I'm here because, well, a few reasons. Mr. Hoddle invited me so graciously over the last, I don't know, five year. months or so. And year, at least today is the day he's going to have my complete and full attention. Hoping to keep this under an hour, but God only knows what will happen. Are All you right. the kid? I am gang is ready to get this started. Derail. I want to derail you for a second. All right, you guys go. I'm done. Well, Good. Why did Why Do did it. you block me after I kept pointing out that you were misrepresenting the arguments of everyone you were engaging with? <laughs> right into the drama. Jesus. Well, I don't mind getting right into it. The reason I blocked you is mostly because you're annoying, but also because I oh. felt that I would give you Ouch. the the accolade of being the first person that annoyed Chris to the degree that finally required him to actually use that block button and experience blocking for the very first time. It had very little to do with anything you were talking about and everything to do with uh, your, your fucking incessant, incessant yapping. Right, Jesus so yapping. Christ. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, I guess, I guess that's what we'll call uh, correcting. But uh, I, I'm honored, but it's, it's, it's by no means the first block I've experienced. I have a long trophy list of blocks. No, I think you meant for space. him. I it think you meant blocking. Yeah, you have to tell the story Chris. such that it is because of uh, some specific thing, like independent of a lot of other shit. I, I have a rule that I'm testing out. There was you and one other person who met the criterion for that rule. We can talk about it if you like. We can talk about the issue that you took umbrage with, or we can go to Mr. Hoddle. My time well, is yours. I just wanted so, to bust your balls, Chris. That is all. So I Busted. just kind of wanted to clear things up. Um, I've always, I know you keep saying that I've said that Bitcoin is not hard forkable, and I've never said that. Like, so I just want to clear that up right now. Hoddle has never said Bitcoin can't hard fork. It's in me, but you keep saying that I've said that. So just clear that out real quick. Okay, so everybody agrees that Bitcoin can't hard fork. Is that, and I, I apologize then if it was my statement no, that Shinobi. people didn't believe that. Shh. But see, this is, okay, if Shinobi we're going to go down this road, this is the kind of point. Like, we have the, or I, I have the opinion here, and some people do agree, that the probability of a hard fork is is pretty much equivalent to winning the lottery every day for the next two years, unless it is something that unequivocally puts everybody's value at stake. And uh -huh. disconnected from that is my argument that I made uh, last year, that you could objectively define Bitcoin, which is incorrect, and I've publicly stated as such, but that is completely tangential to whether or not the network can be hard forked. Well, and, and, and I agree with Shinobi on this until people start talking about actually taking the technical debt and the soft forks and the hacks and putting them into a hard fork to increase throughput. If that was universally available, I think obviously that hard fork would pass, but that doesn't mean I want to let shitheads in the window that are going to be like, let's hard fork for dumb reasons, if that makes sense. Okay, so my two-second take on that, because it seems like you've done a lot more thinking about this than I have, is that I see Bitcoin as a social process at this point. And if that is true, then we have a new realm of programming available to us, the, the programming of the carbon, the people of Bitcoin, which I think is lamented across okay. the community, and which I believe is fair game.
and but we see, can Chris, talk about what like, that means. Wait, what do you mean? See, this this is a conversation that, at least from my perspective, was put to rest last year. Like we we have the governance structure, or as you just put it, the programming of the carbon that is pretty much just anybody, absolutely anybody, can advocate for something. And if they are successful in convincing the entirety of the network that what they're advocating for is something they should do and upgrade, it will happen. Short of that, like that's it. That's the carbon programming process or the governance process, like Finn. That's well, what it's been. I I think that that's very dismissive. I think that there's a humongous body of knowledge, uh, science even, that tells us how it is that humans come to consensus and we would be wise and we are required to understand that body of knowledge. It is not so simple as it being a roll of the dice. There's nuance and well, there I'm, are I'm not implying a, there. a roll of the dice. I'm making a broad, generalized statement for a specific reason. But it might even be harder than to roll is saying, because it's not forms. just consensus, it's value-oriented, incentivized consensus, which is another spanner in the works of trying to get consensus, because there's other motivations that are involved at a fundamental level. I mean, Hold there's, on. A, there's reason. a couple things there. I wouldn't mind dicing that up. Can I just uh, yeah, perhaps yeah, visit ahead. something here? When we started some of these discussions, it seemed as if there was a repulsion to the notion that there was any government, governance, and now it seems that the ball has moved and that there, in fact, is governance. And I think Mr. Hoddle, though, doesn't necessarily accept that, which was kind of what brought me here today. And perhaps no, I, I think the asked... governance in the software, every 10 minutes we can census. That, that's my opinion. And, and, and real quick, Chris, like at, at oh, no on, point have we... I argued anything is non-existent in terms of governance. I have laid out the very broad, generalized statement that I just made out. And that is consistently what I have defined as the governance process here. I take umbrage with there the fact that people process. take that word and assume there must be some formal hierarchy and structured thing with rules, whereas th th there is no rules involved with that. It's just an open field. Go advocate. You will either be successful or not successful. Well, that's what the United States government does, too. So that, that's very reductionist, and there's a lot more nuance but, but, than that. That that's not true because there are very formalized, structured rules and hierarchies involved in the governance of something like a country such as the United States, whereas something with Bitcoin, it is effectively wide open anarchy. You have so the you, field of advocacy open and good luck. Do you, well, you, you can think run for president Vladimir, very easily. Think, it's not wide open anarchy in this space and it's not wide open anarchy. Uh, you, you have to get into the context. Like where where is the body? Of citizens, and then within that context, we decide what the rules are. Now, you can just but write you yourself in as president, that. right? So, that, how do you measure that? How do you measure the? I think that emergent complexity has already come from anarchy, and so calling it wide open anarchy might be too much. But I think that an anarchistic sense of emergent complexity is the governance model of Bitcoin. I don't think that anarchy should be used as something that means lack of order. So, I'm fine with that. Though, what you guys have to understand is that anarchy is a transitional process which means it will necessarily beget more structure over time. Well, and emergent then, complexity is what we would prefer, but I think that we're in agreement there. Do you agree yeah. that we could call what yeah. you're talking about emergent complexity? Well, emergent complexity is, is an appeal to the a-causal existence of things, which I think is hilarious because it is not, in fact, a-causal. And I can show you different ways and means that we got to but where I, we're at. I disagree so that it's an a-causal it argument. Why, why do you why, qualify why you think it's an a-causal argument? That doesn't make any sense to me. Be, because it means that there's no degree of, like, predating process and i'm okay with what? that it's just that it's it's not on it's just not honest it's just absurd that, no, what you're saying doesn't make any sense to me well this, this i mean i don't want to get into a dictionary game although i don't mind doing it this notion of emergence is like effectively what brought us bitcoin where like all of a sudden like, oh. emerged from nothing came this declaration it's what brought bitcoin. us everything by definition well it, it brought us bitcoin sure but it didn't bring us the bit process exactly a, How did a it not? process, an informal process started to which Amir Taki, if I recall, then named the process to his degree of liking, soliciting information from others to further polish the process. And from there, individuals retained some degree of social capital and accrued social capital and began the process of hierarchy in the leadership. But yeah, again, but individualism like, doesn't like, reject hierarchy. Like the anarcho-individualistic tendencies that we're talking about don't don't have any problem with hierarchy. I remember when I was in the Briar Patch a while ago, and I was talking about uh, um, oh fuck, my I crashed my train of thought. I'm sorry. And real quick, a rejection Chris, of hierarchy like, in you, you just implicitly terms. like implied there that 
there is absolutely no way to go about introducing change to Bitcoin except the bit process, and that is completely false. If you are successful in a route of advocacy that bypasses the bit process, then you are successful. And we, you have we have evidence change. of that. We have evidence. Yeah. Like, I, this I, just I agree happened. with that. I don't disagree with that. I mean, that this, this sounds like this, these are things that I probably told you on Twitter that you've rejected in the past. <laughs> we can revisit, but DeRose, I remember us talking page, about, uh, and you really, you really caught up before. I was on Neil Anderson in the uh, the Briar Patch, and I was talking about just hierarchies, and you really latched on to that idea of just hierarchies, and I think that's what we're talking about right now. These hierarchies are are emergent from order, which is incentivized through natural processes, which makes it super different from any type of by decree hierarchy. No, that's exactly the same way the United States had formed. No, I mean, in some degrees and in some ways it has, but it's been compromised since then. And I think that everybody can agree with that. Why? And, and like, Why? what is it to compromise exactly, if not what through emergence? Of, Hold on. Is, would, would, would you, you, so you are saying that the Constitution was not a decree? What? Well, it started with the Articles of Confederation, uh, which was a group effort of people who had higher position in the hierarchy. That failed, and they retried it under the Constitution, and that seems to be working. And then it's been appended on ever since, which is kind of what's going to happen here in Bitcoin. That sounds a lot like uh, market uh, happenings and uh, complexity emerging out of chaos more than a decree being stuck with and drugged through the mud in yes. perpetuity. That's what's happened in the United States. It's what will happen here. It's a market. Governments compete. Governments are a market. I mean, I get what you're saying. I, I disagree with the emotion of your argument because I don't like arguments, but I can't really completely deny what you're saying about how the government works. But I, I wonder, what, what, what is your deeper point in this comparison? It's that there's, I mean, for me, as a, a overview, there's a morality that you guys ascribe to that is just not functional anymore, and it needs to change. We that subscribe morality, to a non-functional morality? Yes. And you just, you just articulated why it's not functional, because it means that you believe that order will come unprecedented or uncoordinated, and then when it happens, you look back and you say, oh, it was emergent. But, but my point is that, like, no, every, that was a discussion that happened. There are people in the space whose opinions matter more than others, and that is a de facto, it's, prob, it's either no, a chiefdom I, I, I'm or not it's talking about emergent. I'm not sure which. I'm not talking about immersion. I'm talking about emergent. I'm talking about complexity from incentive structures that incentivize people to work together for their own benefit because it's pragmatic to do so. It is the capitalist, anarcho-capitalist way that things go from not processed to processed. And you could go all the way back to the argument of the pencil and Milton Friedman or whatever to try to argue that top-down systems are going to be able to do the same thing, but they're not going to be able to. And I'm trying to un understand where you are and where you and I are miscommunicating because I think that we're agreeing on most of the things that we're saying, but I think that possibly there's a couple of terms that, we're, that, that, that you and I are, are, are talking past each other with. Well, we need, I think, an operational definition of emergence, and J9 Roam wrote one down here. Can we read that off for the audio listeners? Yeah, definitely. Shoot. Emergent behavior refers to properties of the system that can't be easily understood from individual components or small groups of individual components. Emergent behaviors are collective outcomes of the whole system and must be understood at the system level rather than the individual level. Exactly. So if you're trying to centrally plan an economy, it becomes literally impossible. But if you have the emergent complexity of pragmatic action and self-interest in individuals, emergent complexity goes off the charts and things start being built really quickly. Like the that's 300, what Bitcoin is. And the 300 years in which America took over the world, that's what was going on. And a lot of people think that that's been compromised extremely harshly with the new laws and things that have been ratified in, 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 in the meantime. I don't, see how, I don't know what compromise means if not like some degree of morality, like it is Broken. immoral, and I'm yeah. fine with that, but then we have to discuss perhaps the degree to which immoral actors are somehow exempt from the emergence of their behavior. Well, the whole I mean, thing comes into a discussion of negative rights versus positive rights, and then um, encumbrances and entitlements and the entire rule of law. Well, be, I think that we would be much better off if people understood that. I think that you're right. Can I, can I suggest here that the problem that I have with the morality that you guys are pursuing is that where I see it, you guys are enforcing ignorance. You're willfully ignorant of the precursors 
to emergence. Like you, you designed, and, and this isn't unusual. Willful ignorance is a huge the part of your morality. The precursors, this is a chicken and an egg. This is nonsense. The precursors were emergent complexity too. Everything emerged. So four and a half billion years ago, shit started happening, and we're all emergent complex from that. So complexity birthed your governments. The chicken and the egg argument doesn't work from where you're coming from, DeRose. Yes, I understand there's violence, and we have to admit that, and we have to have some type of collectivized self-defense, and that's a, a tough issue, and I admit that that's a tough issue that we are potentially being ignorant of. But specifically, when when it comes to Bitcoin development, I think that our ideas and policies are the best way to make something to compete with systems that we have identified as "quote unquote" compromise. Your, your favorite word that I keep using. It's already hold on. There's, there's a pressured speech there. Like just like relax. We're gonna get through this together. And no, we're there's a pressured speech. Okay, okay, I have a, okay. I have a very okay, short amount of time before I have to go take break. care of my kids. I'm not trying to rush anything. Let's well, then not maybe what's get appropriate into the meta Hoddle commentary and I talk. about people's state of mind and emotions, which you tend to make a habit out of. We're discussing the issues here, not well, why, attempting why not to transition though, this into a, an assessment of individuals' characters. Because he's he like, talks quickly. He tries to articulate himself in an efficient and concise manner. But, but that's the, the thing. Is he, doesn't, do. he doesn't format this in a way that is enough for me to digest in my stupid way and probably... For the audience to kind of like sit there and think about it. it's like it's very quick to come out and i think it needs to be inspected it shouldn't be assumed that it would be received in the manner that it is presented okay no, well, wait, for wait, instance, well, you keep, you keep saying that, that we have a broken morality so define what you are assuming is the, the moral stance or base that we're coming from yeah so the the big contention i have as it relates to this at the moment is that whenever on Twitter, I or somebody else or in general wants to talk about the precursors to emergence, you you shame it, you declare it off limits, it's you nonsense. make an appeal to it's anarchy. incontrovertibly nonsense. There are no precursors to emergent complexity. It's where everything that exists came from. And so people get upset. So if I look at the definition, it, it does not actually suggest that it's impossible. The definition as supplied, and I hate to be definitional, but this is, you know, where we started is that the, it, we can't easily understand the individual components, but not that it is impossible to understand. And discussion itself around that should should be fostered. I don't see what the harm is. Well, in here, here, put it this way, Chris. Like, they're, the precursors are set in stone. In the case of the universe, to go back to Blake's example here of things crawling out of the primordial ooze billions of years ago, there are laws of physics. They might not be completely understood, but they are immutable, ironclad laws of physics. That is the system. And within that system, bound by those laws of physics, complexity emerged naturally as individual components interacted with each other. Now, to take that and apply it to Bitcoin, we had the initial consensus rule system. That was the set in stone. This is the base rules. And the complexity has evolved around that. Like th this is the, the precursor to emergence is the rules of the system that you start with like that's it that that is but if that were true we wouldn't there, have there had three no hard forks up till now if that were true there would have been three hard forks there would have been zero hard forks there's no, no that's there debatable hard forks. well that's that first of all dude three hard forks is very, very debatable even if guy where you're getting your source from like i talked to Ani, who wrote the bitmix research thing and we had a long discussion with other developers and that's very debatable there is one hard fork that satoshi did like back in the day, that's not debatable. Everything after that is debatable if it was hard fork or not. Well, if, but it's, that's if it's the... happened at least once, first off, that substantiates the but point Chris, that it's when happened. There's five people, and there's five but, but people Chris, on the network. Is, there's no like, harm the, in the incentive it. structure around that initial set of consensus rules is what emerged into complexity. And it doesn't matter that, th that there are changes to those rules underneath. That is where the incentive structure began. And that is where the complexity emerges from. And that is not a debatable thing. There is no nuance there. There is the starting rules of the system. And from that, complexity emerges. Like, period. But if it was that simple, why would it be offensive then? And, then, and if it's offensive, that, mean it's not, that means it's not that simple. That means that there's something else more interesting going on. But there. it's not that people are being offended. I think that what you're seeing is people are trying to shut you down because what you're talking about sounds centralized and it's socialist. It's not. It's nonsense. It sounds like it's nonsense. That's what well, it's it's intellectual intellectual read into the nonsense centralized to try to get past a, it. Centralized is a measure of immorality in this space, which is I'm okay with some of that. Well, I think no, it's a no, positive no. thing. Me personally, Chris, it's that you are being intellectually dishonest in trying to move towards this nonsensical postmodernist analysis of things where nothing means anything, anything is what you want it to mean. And that is not the case. Like in, in the example of the universe at large, there was an immutable 
law of the system and how it operates and from that complexity emerged and that again in terms of the incentive structure and the initial rule set that informed that incentive structure and how complexity emerged from it that that is not a matter of debate that there is no anything can mean anything that's what it was the incentive structure began there and it evolved into a more complex interaction between the individual parts from there like period we, we know there could have been a lot of inputs that would have been different and, and we can talk about postmodernism and its role in programming carbon because I find that very interesting. Uh, what do you like. mean by, hold on, one second, programming carbon, what does that mean? Is that like social engineering? Influence. Social engineering influence. influence. Oh, okay, all right. We have, right, we have humans here and those humans need to receive programming. And we know that. We all know that because we were watching other people do that in this space successfully. So 21 million coins, digital scarcity, censorship resistant. Well, well here's another thing too, guys, I will say. You, have, you all have a shared oppressor that I think is hilarious in this context right now, that shared oppressor is somebody who is a oppressor because they par they programmed the carbon. And here we are lamenting their success. So I guess that was well, a Hold on, hold right? on. Are, are we what? talking here about Roger Ver and Bcash, to be explicitly clear? If you haven't figured it out yet, it's not just them, it's the <laughs> miners. But okay, yes. well, well, no, okay, uh, well then here, like, no, Chris, there there is no nonsensical <laughs> oppressor narrative. That there, This is not a, you are detracting from us it is that they are lying they are being factually inaccurate in claims they are making and in the interest of protecting people who will fall victim to factually incorrect claims i set out to correct them if you look at for instance the bitpico thing that's been going on lately this the claim that they are making is that you can simply scale linearly on chain forever and that is sustainable that is objectively false as their research shows in constructing complex attack box like just at 32 megabytes right now, you would need 200 gigabytes of RAM to be able to parse through a block and go through the UTXO update pro or UTXO set update process if it was constructed to be as complex as possible in terms of script and signature validation. That would crash almost you don't have to any explain, VPS instance. You don't have to explain that to me, but you do have to explain then why it has succeeded to the degree that it has. And, and if it was as simple the, as a missile, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not let me finish. You're not let me finish. I'm almost done. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Well, simple, you, you asked well me if to it's a rabble, then don't ask me to be here. Like, come on. Don't be this. You, you, let him talk. Let you him just talk, asked me to me. clarify something. I, like, I just, you guys want to jump on me, and that's great. I, I appreciate it. Just let there be some no, structure. No, no one's jumping on. Go ahead. No one's jumping on you. Okay. Yeah. No, all I'm, all I'm trying to say at this particular moment is that you can tell me it's objectively false, and I'm very sympathetic to that, okay? And that's very, like, structuralist. And I love that culture. God, do I love that culture. But yet, you have to acknowledge that they have been successful to a degree that does not uh, comport with that explanation. So the burden now is on you to say, well, why has this but, achieved but, any he's talking about no, hold on, hold on. Keep Let talking. me deconstruct that right but now. But Bcash hasn't no, been successful. They have, not, they have been successful in convincing people this is a yes. viable thing by making these false claims because these Still people are not thinking critically and assessing things. And to go back to the instance of the validation cost of a block and how they are wildly misrepresenting that, look at the actual block sizes of Bcash. They've only made a very small minority of blocks that are in excess of m most of them aren't even a, a megabyte like they're they literally like double digit kilobytes in size and well, when you see the mempool average. get to the point where it's well in excess of the average block size you still have these small blocks being made somebody uh, i forget who literally just threw 32 megabytes of transactions into the mempool and it was broken down into a series of four blocks before it was processed and now personally i speculate that this is because covert asic boost is going on uh, partly which is you know everybody knows what the hell is going on there it incentivizes small blocks so that they can cost effectively grind through the Merkle roots, but also because of the fact that some of these people are aware of the complexity and validation cost and know that if they start making blocks that big, it will have drastic negative consequences for the network at large. So it is because like they are making these claims and then not following through with them, both because they understand the cost that that will incur on the network and because there's also a profit motive in, in not doing that because of the use of covert ASIC boost. So that is a wonderful to persuade yourself. And it is a, also the belief that I have. But nonetheless, that isn't converting people. And what do you I mean would converting? Say, I don't understand what you're saying. Why don't what's not converting the, people? The carbon the carbon isn't accepting that programming. 
It's just well, not. Well, why do you <laughs> say that, Chris, when that programming is evidently in conflict with reality in the long term? And I'm sorry but, if I can't convince you, everybody else to not make a foolish choice. I can convince some people, and those I can't, well, I'm sorry they're going to learn the hard way. But that's your burden to bear. You're the you one who bears the, the stress earlier. of that. Like I, That's the point Let, you're not quite simple. getting. Hold on, let's everybody wait up. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's Chris, yeah, like, am I? Do you Shinobi. Oh, Shinobi, Shinobi. Right Sybil right hasn't now? gotten a turn yet. Sybil hasn't gotten a turn yet. <laughs> what is this, third grade? Uh, yes. Chris, you mentioned the miners before, but miners can't really do that much. They can 51% and they can orphan, and that's also very expensive and not really worth it for them. So what appears to be happening with the miners is that they're going direct to the user base as it, as it may be defined, and they're succeeding to a degree that I'm surprised they're succeeding. And no, they're or going... Like, you, maybe they're, Shinobi they're, would say it's, it's not succeeding. That's fine, but but then look at how like angry Shinobi gets when he talks Chris, to somebody and that again, person doesn't listen. Do I sound angry right now? Do I sound stressed? I'm not. I'm sitting here having a calm conversation, and this is something I'll that let you the audience decide. But you, you, you sound a little Chris, charged. Chris, Your you profile looks a little okay, charged. Again, we're getting into the meta commentary where you try to assume and project. An emotional state. I don't know. I was talking Instead a little bit too fast, and you sound a little bit cranky. But no, I'm just trying to be clear and articulate myself. I know. Now, Can I Chris, point out you do this where regularly you're programmed right now? Is that interesting form. to you? You do this regularly in text interactions where you project an emotional state. You do not engage with the argument I'm making. You simply throw out an assertion about my emotional state and use that to just pretty much dance around and not actually respond to the argument. And I've, I've, I don't I've brought the this argument. up to you Why would I argue with, why would I wait, argue with that? Just because stats, Chris, it's just... again, let me, let me finish here. Like, I brought this up multiple, many times with you. It is a manipulative uh, political tactic as far what as is conversation. My, what is my manipulation? I agree with because you. Because you, you are taking here and, and we're talking and there is the impartial observer. There are people who are simply going to listen to this to try and suss some information out of it. And every single time I've ever engaged with you, you always try to use this tactic to paint a perception of me as somebody being angry and agitated and driven by emotion when that's not what's going on. And you do this systematically and consistently in almost every interaction we have. Towards what end in your mind? Like, what is it that you think that I disagree with you about? No, I, again, there you go. I'm not claiming a, a disagreement here. I'm claiming that you are manipulating how the impartial observer will take my state of mind and then how they will interpret the arguments I'm putting forth. And you, you want do me, this I, I can tell you what I'm doing to you if you want to hear it, if you want to know that he's always like this like shinobi is not always but i mean a good amount of the time we'll have just average conversations and he's very much the same way so i mean because he has an insecurity because he is unable to communicate with these people and he can't understand why they're not converting that's what that's 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 we don't, don't, but I, I enjoy it, and I, I think you all would find that the carbon is more easily programmed than you would ha believe, and if, if you find that they're not listening to you, it's very easy to get them to do whatever the hell you want. All right, can talk that's about fine, that. that's fine, but the thing is, you pointed to a, a group of people, and you said we're not successfully converting them. You didn't quantify like the size of that group in comparison to any of the other groups. And also, you assume that my goal Bitcoin is necessarily is. in every instance to convince the person that I'm talking to. When we have these discussions in public, there is always the implicit impartial observer. My goal is not always necessarily to convince the person I'm engaging with they are wrong. It is to I put know. the arguments out for the impartial observer to actually see. Why do you communicate see. then? There's two, there's two reasons to communicate. I can answer this or you can, you can tell me what you think. To put out an argument for the people in general, both those engaging with me directly and those who will watch the engagement from an impartial perspective to assess and make a decision. That's, that's pretty but, close. What I would say is the two reasons to communicate are to persuade oneself or to persuade others. And what I am trying to do with you is get you better at the latter because it doesn't work what you're doing. All right, hold on. Can and we are they're programming you, by the way. <laughs> can I, can can I talk here? about how they're programming you? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. All right. Can we compare? You keep talking. Jesus cash. Christ, Christ! I'm looking. I'm looking at the statistics right now. A block reward of is eight thousand dollars. A block reward of Bitcoin is seventy six thousand dollars. That's been that's been going down basically.
please, since the day of the fork. Like how the comparison, the hash power is like 7% of the hash power of Bitcoin. It's, it's not comp- like you can't compare this. Well, okay. If that's the metric, but then why, why is there so much angst? And I want well, to point out, you hold on. You have to understand when, the, when Bcash forked, it inherently comes with hodlers. So you, it ha- had an artificial price from the people that couldn't sell their coins. Some pe- people didn't know they had to sell. Some people didn't want to risk selling their coins. So that just put, you had all those lost coins that just put constant, um, of just, um, a restriction of, of sell order. So and, and also, real, real quick, so I then why do you guys again, care? Chris, like, why you do you guys care about Bitcoin this cash? Emotional because state. like you are, I mean, outside in the community at large, yes, there are people out there who uh, feel anxiety or angst because of these things. But you're you're implicitly projecting that onto the people baby. here. Like, I I care about discussing these things because I see to a part some rational people who are supporting this because of what i believe a lack of the facts and a lack of a actual intellectually honest process of assessing things and because also there are a number of people out there who have not even begun to assess any of this they are simply going off the he said she said which oracle do i trust model and eventually these people will start diving into and attempting to assess these things themselves so i want to have the arguments out there so that there is actual information for them to digest in the process of assessing things. I, I, yeah, I, I'm trying to pick up what any, DeRose is saying. Hold on, because I think you, you have picked, value to what quick, you're saying. Real quick, okay. you could have picked any, just real quick, you could have picked any one of these projects in the space. There are thousands. In my mind, you should have picked the number two market cap or the number three or I down. do. But you, I no, critique instead, Ethereum consistently nothing I rate you, constantly. I will throw EOS. out there and I'll let people decide. Nothing I rate you more than Bitcoin Cash. Because that's again, you. like Who again, you? you are projecting no. Where you this emotional that? state, Chris. I, I am like critical Bitcoin Cash. of a number. I, I love of Bitcoin Cash, and I can't talk about that. Yeah, okay. Like, let's like, hold on. Let's see. Why? Let's Why? Hold on. Hold on. Let's hold on. Hold on. I want to go back to what DeRose said because DeRose was like, talking about unpacking things earlier. Huh, I think it's valuable if we do that. Really and DeRose is talking about communication value, something. and I think that communication value is the biggest thing that we're going to get out of here that's worthwhile. I think instead of talking past each other or being emotional, communication value is important. And what DeRose is saying is that communicating in one way versus another is going to be more effective. And I've w- witnessed that. When Bitcoin Cash first came out, I said they're going to have the highest value proposition if you're going to hold it on an ephemeral basis when they're in insular value provided by Coinbase is at its most. And yeah, nobody yeah. remembers that I said that but, at all. So if re- I would have said it more like DeRose is talking about, it would have actually gotten a lot more traction and probably would have helped a lot more people. So I'm trying to see where are DeRose's disagreements so that I can do that better because I think that he does have a better uh, ability to sway people than I do. But really quickly, I want to I want to clarify something before we move too far on from it. Like again, you are projecting emotional states and inaccurate statements about my actions in general in this space, Chris. I am very critical of Ethereum regularly. I am very critical of a lot of projects built on Ethereum regularly. Lately, I have been very critical of the EOS project. I am very critical of things like Monero and Zcash. Uh, Metronome is another example. There are a, a wide number of things in this space that I am very critical of. And you very erroneously, and in my opinion, manipulatively continue focusing only on my criticisms of one thing and attempt to create this perception that that is the only thing I'm being critical of. And that is just objectively false. So just real quick, I think Blake has a great, great approach. I don't mind, I don't mind which way we take it, but you may consider Shinobi that you, you really, you got like the, the, the monkey on your back on some of this stuff and I know you don't like it. But I don't know that you you know what projection means, and I don't mind taking that label because it's fine by me. And, and then, you know, if we're making a display for the audience, they can make a decision over who is emotionally charged. That's fine. But I don't know that it's flattering to you. And I think you got to listen a little <laughs> bit more, bud. All right. All right. Hold on. Bottom I'm line. emotionally charged, so I got to go. DeRose, it was cool to talk to you. I haven't got to talk to you in a long time, so that that, that was pretty cool. But I got to go take my kiddos. So good talk all around, you guys. Hey Blake, uh, let's do a uh, let's do a show on how to communicate or how to persuade at some yeah, point. Email me and we'll put that on the uh, agenda. That sounds like a great topic. I'm gonna yeah, follow you on Twitter. To... Follow me back and I'll send you a message. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I haven't really gotten anything out of this yet. Like, let's try and you know spend a little bit more time listening to each other. Like, I, I... Well, wasn't Mr. Hoddle supposed to be the one to talk to me here? And yeah, I haven't heard him I much mean, at all. There is a bunch of people that I wanted to talk, but yeah, I just wanted to talk more about Bitcoin more than like everything else. Like, I was trying to get to the of, I guess. You're a fan of Bitcoin Cash, and you're upset that we talk shit about it. Is that what's going on? No, I I can tell you what my 
grievances are with some of your platform positions and we can take it in that direction. Sure, go ahead. Okay. What I see is this pursuit of anarchy in a way that is not in comportance with, I think, a lot of the new demographics. I think you're talking mostly to yourself and I think that that community is shrinking along with libertarianism as a whole. And I think that if we're going to be persuasive with the new people and to acclimate them to our values, we're going to have to change the narratives a bit. And I think that you will find your own self bearing a lot of the weight of not doing so as you become alienated amongst the, the noobs, which are incorrigible, but you know, greater, greater than so us in numbers. This, this is what I th feel like. I feel that as, I mean, you have to understand when I got into Bitcoin, I had a feeling that as time, there's going to be people that would have, that have different opinions. And the longer this continues, the more people are going to like, you know, it's going to be a wider range of opinions. But what I also realized was that if they held on to the coins, dictate how the how the program continues, more or less. Um, if unforked, Bcash forked. Um, if Bcash, what was what was the coin that was worth eighteen thousand dollars, and Bitcoin was worth you know two thousand dollars, then I would agree with you. I would say that the new the noobs are coming in. They want what you know Bcash is providing, but that didn't happen in uh, it got dumped to 20 percent of bitcoin and that told me that assured me that the hodlers are still still are, are all on the same because if those coins didn't get dumped on fork day then, then i would agree with you but that didn't happen like everything you're saying that new all the new people could do is just buy bitcoin and then they could sell bitcoin there's really not nothing else they can do they can't ask for anything this is all voluntary work i mean if they feel like they have a better way of going about it they create a hard fork they convince as many people as possible to buy their coins and there you have it but you can't change bitcoin within itself it's impossible okay so just from the start of that i want to point out that you think that the people who i think have the most amount of bitcoin should have a greater sway the form of government you're advocating is the plutocracy. I just want to point that out there. You may or may not know that. That's fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But note that what brought you here, as per your, your suggestion just now, isn't in fact anarchy. Anarchy is plutocracy. I, I don't. I don't know that that's the, what the folks would tell you. It kind of is, though. I mean, if you really kind of break it down to the simplest terms, like the. The anarchy is is what you is left for the wealthy to experience to allow that area to kind of unfurl, but it doesn't do the good that it that it's supposed to for the rest of everyone else. It's kind of like an unfair bias uh, that the wealthy get to observe this complete freedom, where and experiment with it, and people below that are kind of trapped in that rigid framework. And, and to a degree, that's kind of okay, but I think it's like that there's a large disparity there. Can I also point out that if, if it's a plutocracy that we're here for, might it be that you're actually advocating for Roger Veer to have, I don't know how much Bitcoin you have, but Roger Veer but to have most, more sway than you? A, a plutocracy implicitly implies a, a, a more formal, legally recognized governance structure backed by force, where, where people can entrench yeah, exactly. themselves and, and never leave that position of plutocratic influence. In, in a system more leaning towards anarchy, they either successfully provide services and products and things of value that will voluntarily get people to provide or exchange their Throw wealth incentives. to them in exchange for that. And only those who can successfully compete in that landscape will be able to hold a position on top. It is not as simple as you get wealthy and then you are forever wealthy and forever in control and forever on top. Yeah, don't forget, those coins didn't have much value in the early days. People that really believed in it held on to them, and they are, they're in the position they are today because of that. Okay, so we can talk about force, we can talk about plutocracy, we can talk about why I like Bitcoin Cash. All these are good directions. You tell me where you want to go. Choose your adventure. You go. Pick it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so go let's talk about force, I guess, because that's where we left off. Sure. Force has entered the space, and I don't think you recognize that. And the place that it has entered is very obvious. It has entered at the point of interchange between fiat and crypto. And what that means... I agree. We, yes, okay. I agree with that. Okay. So that means that now that we have a situation where law is exerted by way of exchanges in one form or another, and we have to now grapple with that as a community. But, there's, but so you think that every exchange in the world is going to just agree? Like, you don't think that if, you know... 
a few exchanges, say the bigger exchanges, said it's going to be Bitcoin. We're going to, uh, this is going to be the node that we run. You don't think there's going to be another exchange out there that's going to upgrade? It's going to be a lot of money that they could own. What I, there are things that I think, but more so than anything else, what I think is that we should be able to discuss these things without like these crazy assessments that are so uh, the Chris, the dude, like we forced do. ignorance like, and we've on go, and on. Chris again like go look on the block digest and actually watch some of it i have been discussing this topic and dynamic very in depth for literally months or probably almost a year every time something pops up in the news that's relevant to it like you you just opened this entire topic by saying that we deny this and are ignorant of it i have very in depth discussions about this on a regular basis okay but you just heard now i think that the exchanges entered force into this because otherwise you wouldn't have presented to me the outrage over uh i mean the the, the notion of force in the industry so no, clearly they haven't talked about this at no that a, a monopoly of force is the the nuance of the issue that i was referring to in terms of defining a plutocracy you have generalized that and moved into the dynamic of the exchanges as a point of control. That is not something anybody here is ignorant of. That is not something anybody here refuses I mean, to discuss. If, we discuss if you're it saying, quite regularly. If you're saying that American government could, you know, destroy the in Bitcoin, yeah, that could happen. But they won't like just going to go back to the IRC days of peer-to-peer -peer exchanges now. You have decentralized exchanges that will definitely help out in that scenario. I'm not going to stop it. What's going to happen is the difficulty is going to go down, the price is going to go down, but the difficulty goes down at the same time. This is how the network is designed to do. Like, that's the whole point of this. Do you think there might be a better way? No, I really don't. Would you be I open really... to somebody who, who did have a better way? Chris, there is no fucking way in hell you're going to get every exchange to agree on a certain rule set to run. They're not, not going to risk that... We, a few, a year ago, or two years ago, let's say, when Classic was going on, when everybody uh, basically signed the, the, the letter that they're going to be running Bitcoin Classic, it was all the all the top exchanges were doing it, uh, My 85% of the miners were signaling that they were going to run Classic, and at that point, I was a little worried. I was like, holy shit, this actually might go down. Like, you know, all these exchanges are going to get together, they're going to switch programs and tell everybody that this is Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, they didn't do that because none of the nodes switched over. If you have an entire network that's still and miners are still mining it because there's plenty of validating nodes and plenty of buy support and buy pressure, it's not going anywhere. I don't want another Bitcoin on an exchange like I want my Bitcoin. You know, I, I wouldn't get Bitcoin. If I'm not buying that Bitcoin and other people aren't buying that Bitcoin, it's not Bitcoin. You're going to have a hard time selling it that that's Bitcoin. So it sounds like you're not open to a better way. Well, I feel like we're this qualified is... better. I mean, this is working very well right now. There's it's a been ridiculous working. amount of it's competition been really long time. in different jurisdictions that creates that Nash equilibrium, that friction in changing things unilaterally. And that's going to get even more difficult to change as we start rolling out more and more decentralized exchanges. And I mean, it, it, like things like BISC do have liquidity issues on the fiat side, but that is not something that would kill it. That that is an introduction of more friction in tandem with centralized exchanges. In a worst case scenario, that is something that could provide a pricing mechanism, though much more inefficiently than a centralized exchange. And at the end of the day, like if if you just look but at, I mean, still enough, have how to how to hold on hold on. There's a number of countries and central banks that right now are leaning towards not doing any kind of tokenized fiat. And then there's countries like China that are moving very heavily in that direction. And once you have a tokenized fiat, then that starts solving a lot of the fiat friction sides for decentralized exchanges. So you have an inevitable growth in the friction to change the Nash equilibrium between economic entities, uh, exchanges that function as those on and off ramps and that's just going to grow and introduce more and more friction the more this space expands yeah i'll give yeah, you i'll give you a very you some, good point can i yeah. hear to that or or do you yeah, yeah. Oh. go ahead go ahead I'll run out. okay i would like to hear what everyone has to say but i'd like to digest it now what you've described is probably the politics of inevitability which is the belief that the inevitable is in fact guaranteed and that's okay i think those are even great politics but the problem with the politics of inevitability for your purposes are that it precludes any ability of uh, carbon programming to have an effect, which would mean then that you, you basically have to choose one more or the other. Either carbon programming exists 
um, or it doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, that's fine. But that means that you, there's nothing to be. There's nothing you have to do. Nowhere just have your I account. implied that it, it doesn't exist. Like I mean, let's nowhere. Okay, we're resistance. making progress. We're making progress. progress. But again, you you imply progress as if my my point of view or perspective has changed. It I has don't not. Think, that has Chris, always I been. Shinobi, I gotta my I gotta get something out of the air with you real quick. Okay, look, dude. Like you have this chip on your shoulder about your reputation in a way that I don't think is reasonable. And the chip on your shoulder is like like that things have to originate from you, that there's a rightness, that there's a there's a righteousness, no, no, Chris, there's I a morality. A with people not done misrepresenting yet. what you, I have stated but and do you what recognize, my opinions are. But do you like, recognize that's how that is? Okay, I, I do not have a chip on my shoulder in terms of all ideas I hold must originate solely from me. I have an issue when people misrepresent my opinions and my statements. No, no, no. What you're doing is when I introduce something that's clearly introduced, by the way, I don't think there's any question about it. You defer to the time that you introduced it, which wasn't actually the case. And it's pretty trivially demonstrated. Like, that's the chip. You got to just have an idea evaluation and not a person evaluation. Because I think that you're a great person. I think I'm a terrible person. Now, can we evaluate our ideas? All right. So <laughs> I think I really, truly believe that uh, censorship resistance, digital scarcity was what programmed me into Bitcoin. Those are pretty fucking good words that, that I felt good with it. I felt if I could transact with somebody and no one could stop that transaction, that's something that I valued. If you consider that carbon programming, I'm pretty sure if I go and I tell them, this is money that state can't take away from you if you properly store it. Um, and there's only 21 million of this. I'm pretty sure people get, get excited about that. That's how this is. This thing got started. That's not well, okay. Fine. That is how it got started, and there was a lot of carbon that was programmed that way. But you see what programmed the noobs? The very same people that we told Getting that rich, to, bro. Get who, not, nothing programmed okay. the noobs, man. They just want to get rich. That's where they're looking. Fine. They feel like they missed that on Bitcoin, so they see something that, you know, a billion-dollar market cap that could probably go up 40x, and they go buy it, and then they sell it. They're not great start, using, great start. using anything. They're not, so, everybody wants it. So why do some products... Rich. So then why do some products succeed at the other's expense? If they're, if the same getting rich opportunity is across the board, why is it that we see EOS with this amount and we see like, I don't because know, ABC the market, at a Because amount? the market is very new and they have, it's just not educated. People have no idea what is going on. There's a fucking maybe 50 people in the space that actually know what's happening and what's going on. That's going to take time. Chris, can I suggest network, that that delta is the carbon programming delta? Signals in, Hold on. Can I, real quick, I will get right to you. I just want to suggest that what you're, you, you probably haven't really thought about it in these terms because you were very dismissive about it, and that's okay. But the difference between the winners and the losers is necessarily the carbon programming difference. I just want to point that out there. And I, and I think that the dismissiveness of that is what's costing us a lot of issues in this space. Now, we can continue. But, this, but that's what Bitcoin is. Do you agree that Bitcoin is censorship resistant? I don't think that it's a dichotomy. It certainly is highly censorship resistant thus far. I think it's becoming increasingly less. Why so? Well, I saw a thing in the, I saw a big headline about an FBI sting where they went through a whole bunch of uh, chain analysis type data, they identified a bunch of people, the fungibility issues. Yeah, are becoming but that's more what real. I want. Those are, the, those are the people that bought coins on an exchange okay, and now their inputs Chris, are KYC. How does that, uh, you asked a question, hold on, hold on, I give you an answer. How does There's that others. have any bearing on the censorship resistance of the network itself in terms of? unspent outputs being processed in transactions. Somebody doing something stupid and being arrested by authorities has no bearing whatsoever on whether or not those outputs would be processed if they were transacted on the network. Well, that's a separate question that is under the rubric of censorship resistance and no, nuance that, is appreciated. Very, that is, that is oh, the on, central man. issue. You I mean, I'll answer the question. You, you can, that you can, is censorship fine. resistance. That you is want my what, answer? I'll give you my answer. That is what censorship resistance is in terms of the Bitcoin network, whether outputs, whether they've been involved in illicit or unsavory or socially unacceptable things from a perspective of a large group, will they or will they not be processed by the network in a transaction? That's what it is. And you have just tried to roll up something that has absolutely nothing to do with that under the umbrella of censorship resistance. I think you brought that up under the rubric of censorship resistance. Because that's that's what it is. That is what okay, censorship resistance is. Okay, but you, you accused me of is. trying to roll it up like there was like a foul there. <laughs> Come well, because on, dude. You, you literally just said it's becoming less censorship resistance because somebody was arrested. That has nothing to do 
with whether the network is censorship resistant and whether outputs will be processed. No, oh, I, I think it's so less censorship resistant fan. because number one, fungibility. And then we can yeah, talk about number two, the entrance of force, if you want, but you didn't want to hear that. You instead wanted to like jump on me for saying that it is. Well, no, then, so I don't know what you're again, Roll it up. Again, again, stop with the, the meta commentary and trying to turn this into some gonzo discussion. Like you made a statement regarding those arrests. Is it, what is that a commentary? That that commentary that is it. accurate that you resent? Oh, Come on. No, they did, oh. but it's in, in, that's inaccurate. That's why I'm correcting you right now. The, the well, censorship the resistant quality that. of the network is whether or not sure. outputs will, will be processed. Will decide. That's fine. Will decide. Okay. Right. Do, do we want to answer more questions about some of this stuff? Do you want to move on to something like other things? You, you guys tell me. I'm on your time. Oh, no, Bitcoin's so, technology is making it more private. No, that's what I was going to get. Hold faster than chain analysis is improving. I know yeah, that you're certainly. a fan. Can I, can I point out that I think it was Mr. Hoddle that used the term rule set, how we can get exchanges on rule set. And I, I want to I point that out because like, that's the kind of thing that I think is a constructive discussion. And when I introduced the term rule set, and I'm pretty sure I'm the one who at least popularized it if I didn't introduce it, it was, met with, it was met with like shit throwing, just tables upturned. No, dude, consensus and rule has been around since day one, man. The term rule set rule. as it applies to a team's production of a Bitcoin implementation, I'm pretty sure, not that I want any credit for it, I'm always wrong, I'm a bad person, but I'm pretty sure something that at least I threw out there before almost anybody and received from the same room tons of eggs. And now Chris, here we are in common do discussion. Why do you constantly about? resort right. to just right. ridiculous no, whatever, hyperbole whatever, 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 to, to frame Fine. like other people's state Good. of mind Let and character? Like, it's like, why? Who cares, dude? <laughs> whatever. Let them fucking do it. All right, so. You're I know you're a fan of Monero think, because of fungibility, right? I'm sorry, say it again? You're a fan of Monero because of the that brings, right? Well, we can talk about Monero if you like. There's a lot of things I like well, about Monero. You, you, you were talking about like the whole thing with censorship is that, that you don't think Bitcoin is fungible enough, right? Well, I, and not only that, I, if we want to extrapolate, I don't, I don't think Bitcoin should be fungible at this point. I think that there's a better use for it with a greater market cap and more liquidity and ultimately more censorship resistance for the cryptocurrency space if we don't pursue that. But like, I don't know if that if level I of nuance is appropriate. If I generate a private key and I get a public address out of that, do you agree that there's no way to know who's behind a private key, right? Well, you can, as long as I don't go, as long as I don't go on to OKYC. Okay, you can trace the IPs, and then of course, as soon as it to, enters- Come on, man. I mean, that's First what's being all, done. That's what's well, being done. It's not, not, too, not no, that this trivial, is how, Chris. This it's, it's not that <laughs> trivial. Dude, hold on, time out. Wait, 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 guys, are logged. There are relays on, everywhere. Right, Even, so, I think, the DOD has. Like, come, there's been some Chris, evidence Chris, 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 Guys, Chris, Chris, stop, stop. Everybody talking over each other. Chris, that is nowhere near that trivial. You have to isolate. warm in here. You have to isolate and pretty much eclipse a node entirely to be able to time out definitively the origin of a transaction based on ip and also so, dandelion which is being worked on to be integrated into bitcoin will address that issue as well so it, it is not as trivial as bam i have your ip there, there are very situationally required things that are not universally present on the network to nail a transaction down to an ip address well you didn't really finish but they're, they're, okay if you want we can talk about this more um so not only is your IP address fairly well substantiated in most terms, as soon as you start to use that public key, um, but also as soon as but you again, operate, there, you've just oh, you've okay, just fine. stated Chris, again th something that's wrong, that is false. The Chris, after that's I just explained why it's and... false. Listen, listen, hold on. I think there's confusion going on. When you you are using a light, your light wall is connected to somebody's node. You get that part, right? So there's also that. Absolutely. I thought okay. we were talking about the Bitcoin no, Core not, client, it, but we can talk about like light, you know, like uh, Android well, wallets, how many which are even better. Have, are, that's what you want to talk about, client. That's fine. If you, you're broadcast, like you're receiving coins, there's no way to know who, like, who's behind that address. If you're sending broadcasting coins from your own IP address, yes. But it's didn't silly. I say Why broadcasting? Would, didn't I, didn't well, I actually use the exact word broadcast? I always said send, but I think it's a broadcast. Okay, keep going. I think I used the word broadcast. I know I said send. I, I didn't say receive. I said send. And I think I even said but, the word but broadcast. But again, Chris, it's not as simple as just 
that's it. You're tagged with your IP. Like almost all the widely used SPV wallets out there allow both VPN and Tor integration in the app itself. You, you and didn't as, let me as well. <laughs> and not only that, you all swore. Because it tells me this I, is a morally charged issue. I literally it tells me that there are sensitivities about this discussion. No, no, no. Which means what are you talking about? This you is made, a sensitivity. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's because you made an assertion that is factually incorrect. I literally broke down why it's factually why? I think incorrect. You just I think how you confirmed it. And then it. you just, I think you just reasserted it. What did you? What was the continued. factually incorrect? You didn't really finish. It, it cut me is, off halfway through. And then, then you reiterated how you can only snap your tell when you send. And you have an IP address. That is not the case at all. There are you well, cannot I, just nail down don't the transactions propagation to a source IP address without very situationally specific conditions that are not omnipresent on the entire network. I, I don't think it's fair for me to get three seconds in when you interrupt me before I get to the rest well, of it. When, and then accuse me of being three seconds in. <laughs> Come on. When, when you make an assertion, have it broken down why that assertion is false, and then you just proceed reiterating that assertion as if it's not false, that's going to happen, Chris. You're going to get corrected. But like, I would never, okay. I would like, what never does that prove broadcast... then, that you, can't, you don't have more than a three second memory? Come on. No, it's that right, I'm go going ahead. to correct a false statement when I hear a false statement, Chris. And that you, we, we literally let statements have periods. We let statements have periods. No, you don't. Statement we don't let statements have periods. After having it pointed out as a do false statement. Do you think statement. there's more than 150,000 Bitcoin users that are sending transactions? I'm sorry, say it again? Do you think there's more than 150,000 Bitcoin users that are like broadcasting transactions? I'm like, like ever or like on an average day? Like, I, on an, like just see that. No, we we average, can look that like, stat up. I don't know. I don't know what the timeline is. So but there's a lot of my them. point. My point is, is that there's like probably around 150,000 nodes that aren't using the onion. Everyone else is not using the core client. They're using, you know, SPV wallets, whatever, whatever it is. Those SPV wallets are connecting to somebody's nodes. That node, you know, could have up 150 fucking connections. You don't know sending what. You okay. don't know who's actually that, that transaction. I node. get that. You know what I'm saying? So, so, like, to say, the, to say, who, who is the attacker? Is it like the FBI or is it like if you're the dude next door? If you're a target, I don't care if you're fucking using Monero, you're still going to get, I mean, you're not going to get out of that. Well, then we don't have to worry about fungibility, then do we? No, what I'm saying is right now, as long as you're not using KYC exchanges and you're not tagging your coins and your inputs aren't KYC and you're not sending anything to your fucking home, Bitcoin is pretty private. And if you really know what, using Join Market, because we act, uh, we know somebody that was around with a chain analysis tool and we tested it and it was not that accurate. Oh, okay, Actually, so it wasn't accurate so at can, all. Do I, do I, okay, so like, do I get to, you, it's, you're getting go, to a point ahead. where I can finish my sentences yes, maybe? Go. And we can discuss that, which is wonderful. And you are discovering the value of discussion here. Okay, calm down. So when we have force that has entered the space by way of exchanges, these are liquidity centers. And in many ways now we are beholden to the force that is the world's and when we transact in this space now uh because of that we are limited to very small amounts of money before we are subject to kyc and aml and these types of things and i agree with you that there it's probably not reasonable for bitcoin to go ahead and tackle some of these things which is why i don't think bitcoin should be fungible i i think that that experiment should kind be in a different silo gonna be disappointed because I don't know if you heard the discussions about lightning channels and uh being closed and open with coin joint transactions by so, so if I, I think if I talked about ever, that with no par like two days ago but say that again so Bitcoin eventually right now it doesn't make sense to spend bitcoins obviously there's a having every four years people aren't aware that everyone's expecting the price to go up the I mean so oh, as a merchant you'd be silly so right now everyone more or less is either speculating depending on what country you live or some does make sense to use it as a payment network but when the payment network truly really, you know starts when we actually have a real live payment network um it will be on the lighting network and every transaction uh every you know, that's being opened and closed be a coin join transaction chris well, what, a lot why of value did you judgments just, in there like, why did we you talk just, about that like pivot from the the assertion that it's trivial to tie a transaction propagating from an IP address definitively to exchanges again without addressing the fact that you 
were incorrect and attempted to just reassert an incorrect statement after being corrected. Like to you, be you clear, just completely I'm an invalid person. That. I'm always incorrect. I'm, no, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, okay. I'm wondering, Chris, but why you just you, want, you, be said you wanted to finish the thought that you were interrupted and articulating, and then just completely jump to a different topic because you finished it for me. I mean, I don't. I, you, you. I mean, that's how that worked. All right, let's, let's move on. That you, that we all agree to. Come on. All right, just, so you're, you're just dying to catch me on something that is absurd. I'm telling you, you are a better person than me. I am incompetent, incompetent. and you are no, superior no, no, everything. Chris, this this now is, this is simply ideas. me at this point just just analyzing the method in yes, which you're engaging like you do constantly with other people. And it's it's really like it, it, it's because people it, want to it's, evaluate it's people. They show. don't want to evaluate ideas. So if they do, I know how to win that game. I win it by losing and then we can but evaluate you, ideas. You can't say that. So like you can't say <laughs> you you do know that there's been a lot of uh, contributions by people anonymous, right? To, to core, to Bitcoin core. And nobody knew their names. They came out of nowhere. They had a great idea. It got implemented. Well, that Satoshi, was that. So yeah. Oh, there's Satoshi. You had Elker. You had um, Shannon, Shallon Fry. You had you had yes. a bunch of people that. So like that process. There is no KYC in that process. In in your world where the developers, you know, take charge, there would have to be a KYC process to that, right? Well, are we talking about the code construction, or are we talking about value transmission concerns? Because there's a different silos. And I thought we were talking about value transmission. I, well, uh, yeah, I kind of changed the subject because I was it's getting okay. tired of the, the... Yeah, I guess let's go back to the fungibility and the property talk. Let's, sorry. I'm, no, I'm just going to say real quick, Mr. Hoddle, I, I don't mind as talking to Brian. I've talked to him for two shows already, and I love his company. It may be more constructive for the purposes that you and I discussed earlier for you and I to have a discussion. It is up to you to, to manage Brian Trolls because I'll, I'll talk to anybody. I don't give a fuck. But you're the one he might be cheating. Just throwing that out there. All right. Brian. Brian Trolls. Hey, Dave. <laughs> He's behaving. It's just, it's, just, it's just that it like it's not the best use right, of my yeah. time. All right, listen. So the meat of this whole fucking debate that we got going on here is that do you feel that the core development team should take charge and should dictate the way everything's? And if people don't download the software they that they recommend to download, you're shit out of luck. And you know that's that's that. Correct. Well, no. There's so there's the, the here's what I would say. I would like for you to consider. And I would like to hear your input on, and, and I would like to change my opinion if it's not accurate. The first and foremost thing is that the vast majority of people who are involved in Bitcoin are not only incapable of compiling Bitcoin and incapable of evaluating the source code, but they trust a quote unquote centralized provider to do all of that for them. This is a de facto hierarchy. And for us to persuade or to even pretend otherwise is going to alienate the vast majority of people who are involved in the space. So that would be the first thing I would suggest. Now you can tell me why I'm wrong. You're wrong because life's not fair. I mean, if somebody gets screwed, downloaded the wrong software, you get screwed because they downloaded the wrong software. It's not okay. my problem. I, I, well, I agree, but by, that don't, I don't think that point changes the point. The point is the behavior is existing. We can't deny that the behavior is existing. And, and unless you deny that the behavior is existing, my next point would be, well, why don't we just do them the favor of telling them how to belong to our community? Dude, listen, there's no community. Like, there's probably, there are communities in Bitcoin. There's, there's probably hundreds of them, but there's no one fucking community that you could measure, like, everybody's, like, inputs. Like, it's impossible. That's well, the, the I think big... you admitted on Twitter today that there's a hierarchy. So once you admit that there's no, a there's, hierarchy, it's then not, there's it's probably a, a community. I values, I value, all right, I'll, here, I'll give you an example. Um, when Luke and Adam and all of them went to China, I was against it, as was many others that were against that whole trip, including some core developers like Greg. He was against it. Then you had UASF. Greg, uh, Blue Matt, they were all against BIP 148. We were for it, to the point where Matt Carell came on here and was selling me BIP 148 coins. Like It got pretty heated there for a minute. It's not... If, if what you're saying that could read code would have a better understanding of things, yes. I mean, yeah, with that. But that doesn't mean, like, you, you had a couple thousand people that went into the UASF channel on Slack, and they, you know, somebody on there, not a core developer, fucking, they, he set up a UASF node, and everybody on there compiled it, and everybody was running a UASF node without core permission. Like, happened. Like, we've seen, we've seen people get away from the developers. 
Okay, so I hear what you're telling me, and this isn't inconsistent with what you told me before, but what I would suggest is, number one, almost all forms of government have a system for airing concerns, evaluating concerns, and settling concerns, and Bitcoin is no different. And then no, the other part of that, it's a little on. different. It's a little different, dude. You can't I agree say that's... it's a little different, I, but the other part of that is that when you tell me about your role in the system, I, I agree. The reason why I've singled you out amongst a field of others is because I recognize that you have a position in the hierarchy. And you want to deny that, I which have is noble, high, which is noble, but I Dude, think I'm that it's not serving the news. Oh my God, Chris. But see, Chris, this is, let's go back to like our, our discussion last year about governance. This well, hold is, on, there, there is no Can I have a response, I have a response? The, the I have a response from Mr. Hoddle. Can you not speak for Mr. Hoddle? Let me yes, hear from Mr. Hoddle and there's, then we'll go to there's you. There's a difference in the real world. The majority rules on the minority. You don't have a say with, you have a say, like if you don't agree with the change, well, first of all. Like I put up a with the website with all the different versions of core that's running right now. You have versions that are going back two thousand and twelve. I mean, that's those were all backwards compatible fucking upgrades that you could have either downloaded the new version or if you didn't feel like it, you didn't want to, you just didn't have to do anything. If they put and do that in the world. If they change a law, you have to follow the law or else you go to jail. That's all fine to discuss, but it doesn't address what I think I presented, which was that number one, I think you agree that there's a hierarchy, and then number two, do you accept the the allegation that you have a placement in the hierarchy that is better than the guy who showed up this morning and is looking to download a compiled binary? Dude, I've been here for seven years, so yeah, I like obviously anybody doesn't know what they're doing. They go to somebody that's been in in like the fucking in coin scene for a number of years just like if he saw you like if you were in the scene for a couple of years i'm sure he'd follow you as well that's reasonable yeah. that's reasonable. i'm not a, i'm not a developer though i'm not a, like i'm friends with a lot of developers like i get some information maybe faster than others but that doesn't like i'm not an expert by any means okay that's fine you're very humble in this way and i appreciate that i'm going to pee real quick and if you guys want to take the floor i'm not listening I will be back in less than a minute. I said I was be here for an hour. I'm going to extend this time by an hour because this seems like the kind of conversation I wanted to have here. So let me just pee. Be right back. Sounds good. The floor. Yeah. So for what it's worth, like totally kind of agree with his points. Like, the, the, you know, not all of them, but obviously. But I mean, very loosely. I, I mean, like, I kind of do think that, like, maybe we got away from, you know, making the on ramps into finding Bitcoin, finding the community as easy as possible. Like, look at the situation with Bitcoin.com and Bitcoin.org right now, and and just people being funneled right into Bcash traps right now. It's not like a pleasurable. But that's not, you're not. You're not going to stop that. That's great. That's like, exchanges. See, here's the thing is like he keeps implying that there is a universal overall hierarchy and that's not the case. And I broke this down in our discussion last year uh, of governance. Like you have different groups within no, the overall network effect. Yeah, but and I mean in those singular fluid. groups, they have a, a, a enclosed hierarchy that does not encompass the whole but and both then. hold on let me finish and both like the separate hierarchies and the internal structure of those individual hierarchies are constantly fluid that there is no singular hierarchy yeah. exactly Wait, dude, dude. you took if, the if, words dude, right out of my mouth if that if, re, if a hierarchy existed i, I would probably say that reg max will will probably be at the top of the fucking pyramid right everybody agrees on that not even though it changes dramatically like everyone right. may shift to another today. dev and go like you know he's it now like it changes yeah, but, but all to, the damn to, time today 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 yeah i guess right now maybe all right so the guy who's probably on the pyramid was completely and early against bit 148 right Just i'm back yeah yeah so greg Probably the guy that's on top of the pyramid that everybody listens to. Probably the guy that basically is the developer that is against hard forking Bitcoin for more or, less, or basically saying that it's almost impossible to hard fork Bitcoin. This is coming from the guy that's sitting on the top of the pyramid. That guy did not want to see BIP 148 succeed. He did not want to see that. But yet it succeeded. How? And uh, real quick, just because you were in the bathroom before, Chris, like, you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but like your statements regarding a hierarchy come with this implication that there is a singular 
global hierarchy. And to call back again to our discussion last year on governance, like that is not the case. There are isolated groups within the the whole universal network effect. And the the interrelation between those separate groups is in constant flux. And as well, those isolated hierarchies, isolated from the whole, are themselves in constant flux. There is no singular hierarchy. There is no established method or, or constancy to anybody's position in any of them. And the entire participation in those is entirely voluntary. Like there is no singular hierarchy that you are obligated or forced into participating in. Man, this do train you, is just going right down the tracks. It's perfect. It's like Chris, a perfect you, segue into Chris, maybe the next you, thing we can discuss. Chris, do you want an IRC at all? you want a uh, pound Bitcoin? I don't have as much. I, I'm so. You have no idea how much time I, have I really, that is not really think. I really think if you were on IRC, you would see what kind of fucking shit she really is. Don't agree with each other. The developers don't agree with each other half the time. I like know. that. It's it, like, and because it's because any developer in the world could come in any anonymous name. If he drops something interesting, people will listen. Like that, like I know Brian Hoffman, that was his whole fucking thing. Like he was pissed off that if you didn't have a name, nobody would ever read, or not Brian Hoffman, fucking Paul Sports. Like he's all pissed off that nobody wants to review his shit. The whole point of this is that it's voluntary. It doesn't find your work interesting. They're not going to review it. And also, like, this is a market. The perfect this is a example, pen, just like uh, we have in the United how, States. Like the perfect example of that is the, the UASF. Like that entire like concept, the software, the movement, it all started with four people who are, are nowhere in, in any serious position in any hierarchy in this space, no position of influence, not even widely known, just discussing the dynamic and coming to the realization that we could do that. Like it, it was literally just four people in a conversation I participated in and that exploded into the entire UASF movement. It just started with a conversation it's from literally, complete yeah. nobodies. And it's not like only almost that, like Occupy Wall Street or something, man. But, so you have but, parallels but the in the real world. But the difference, but the difference is this actually this worked. We have Segwit today. If it was for if we kept listening to the core developers, we would not get Segwit today. We wouldn't have it. Yeah, I mean, like none of none of this. So I, I don't know why you're right bringing this up exactly. Like, what what does this have to do with the, the, the existence that, of the that, hierarchy? Because, because the hierarchy is irrelevant to the direction, the rate, and whether or not progress in, in either of those categories actually occurs. It, it's irrelevant to that. Okay, so I mean, you must... we can talk about that because I think that that is a delusion. I don't agree with that. I think that that is your morals asking you to be willfully ignorant. Well, I mean, let's go back again as the UASF as an example. Like, it was me, three other developers just having a conversation, and it led to BIP 148. It was widely supported in the community, despite the fact that in terms of hierarchies Matt, in the space, in most here. of the people in them were completely against it. So the, the oracles in terms of the uneducated in the space were all saying, no, it was supported anyway. It happened anyway. It became mm -hmm. a real thing anyway, in complete defiance of the idea that these hierarchies are what decide happens. Like this, it, this is fair, factually demonstrated in the past Shinobi. that that is not a delusion. It this sounds to exactly be fair. like the medical marijuana debate. Hold on. To be oh, fair, yeah, to let's be... talk about ganja. Hold on. Hold on. To be fair, yes, the UASF movement, especially like you know, because there was a debate one BIP one forty eight or one forty nine, and to be fair, it wasn't until Luke board with one forty eight what really got it going, and Luke were developers, so that probably definitely helped you know people's confidence in this project. But that being said. Core as a team did not agree to Bib 148. So you know the the state of California, no, state of Florida, did not agree to making medical marijuana legal. Nonetheless, it went up to pass for vote, and it's and it passed. And and like that is governance. You reference the Bib process in this, and I don't see this as as invalidating in any way that yeah, the governance if process a supporter, happens. Or but if you weren't but a again, Chris, supporter, no, you didn't want marijuana being smoked. The governance process. Yeah, We're there's denying it's nature and how you it almost said fluxes. hierarchy. You almost said hierarchy and there no, is a denial of hierarchy I, here. I, I now, not, not from I Mr. Was... Hoddle, but from you. And the reason you no, are doing it is because you have a self-esteem no, issue yeah, on this. I don't know why. Stop, stop right now. No, he you literally that just assumed 
that I was going to say something I was not going to say, did not say, and just put that assertion out there with no basis to steer the perception of this conversation. Well, you can listen to the recording. Like, you you, you started to say do it. That. I'm, I don't mind assuming sometimes. I, Chris, I don't if, mind someone's assuming illiterate, if someone's illiterate and can't read, and someone else can read, who are you going to trust like, you know, to tell you what that fucking paper said? Okay, so can we talk just 30 seconds on how people work and how we program humans? Because that's a perfect example. Oh, my God. Oh. We don't have to. That's fine. We can move on. No, to some go, other stuff. go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear, let's hear how we program humans. Not all humans have the ability to specialize. And it's not necessarily that they're just stupid. It's not necessarily uh, that they have anything maybe but a limited amount of time. And so they delegate their thoughts to people who are better suited to have them for them. People much like the people in this room, I might say, old timers. And in doing so, they establish these networks of trust wherein... Uh, even within this room, we have delegates and there, there's a pyramid shaped foundation within the social network and the social fabric. There are what's called valences between these people who themselves are called affinities. There's a science to this. And once we acknowledge that this exists, we can then do things like tell the noobs, look, rather than listen to that guy over there, his name's Roger, you can listen to these people. And in doing so, we can program the carbon to recognize authority in ways that makes everybody well, isn't that easier. what we do? What we do on Twitter when I eat fucking Zabos or something like that? Okay. If you believe that that's a wise outcome, then wonderful. We can move on to the next issue. Or we can talk about how we can do that better. Because I think Shinobi but doesn't say seem to think Zabos, that that matters say, how you do say it. If, say if Zabos decided to say, you know what? Uh, Bitcoin won't work. So we fuck it, you know, increase the subsidy. Like, there has to be inflation. Chris, I wouldn't you can't, retweet that. You, you can't do it better. Well, because you because have a position of the in the hierarchy. Because of incentive structure. No, no, it's is, because of the relevant. incentive structure, DeRose. Like, people who feel themselves in, in possession of an understanding, a grasp of things, are going to go out and advocate if they feel that. That's it. You can't stop it. You can't organize that anymore. You cannot control the actions of people who choose to step up and become an advocate in this this social network you, you I mean, look, that's your belief that's not sustained control. by the science but look what that, happened, that what happened to monero fork look what happened to the monero fork you had all the developers agreeing on something and there's a handful of fucking people that said no fuck you we're gonna stick to the original chain and now you have monero classic like that that's what happened you can't so, but, but you can't so why is it because you dismiss... there's a monetary incentive here there is skin in the game if somebody which makes feels it easier they're in by the possession way. of that and they see that doing that is in their interest, they're going to do it. And you going, well, hold on, let's make it more efficient, let's do it. This It's going to be irrelevant because they have already decided this is what is in my interest because I have skin in the game, and they're going to go do it. And there's nothing you can do except compete with those individuals who choose to do it. That's it. That's all you can do to try to get anything to function more efficiently in terms of this. You can't create... A structure you can't impose a structure you can simply compete and see if your method or strategy is superior that's it that's all you can do well if you if you know that that's awesome but that stands in the face of science and i think you just made that up because that's your cynicism but nothing I don't think that that's a like bitcoin before fact. chris you have to understand that bitcoin is a new fucking thing man like it's a it's a new thing that like science hasn't really caught up to this thing yet this you're is describing carbon. The carbon has been around forever and has faced this problem many times. All right. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I honestly think through what incentives, do you think happened, Shatopi, What do you think happened Shatopi. when 13 colonies... I'm just using this example because we know it. There's much better examples. 13 colonies in the United States broke away from the British blockchain and they had a bunch of random people. They had no center. It was completely decentralized. And then they coalesced into little geographic concerns, into more or less demographic concerns. But the money then, was never decentralized. It was not decentralized. The money was always decentralized, so they didn't... Like, how, would, how did you think it worked back then? They had, like, gold. They had uh, bank-issued currencies. They, in, in the Continental Congress, they started yeah, to issue centralized, centralized currency for the first time. And you were not able to until, validate it. You were not able to yeah, guarantee its your, integrity. Your average person no, you, could you not were. definitively it was a, it was go a, that this gold is, is, look, is, is accurate. This gold look, the is technology, not watered down. That this, no, this the technology has is new. In the vault. You, you the technology is new. The people aren't. People are the same no, type but of people. No, but we never had before. On, guys, guys, guys. The technology is new, and that's what enables the lowest level of informational asymmetry we have ever seen in regards to something like a money like that is never 
in human history existed with the ability to have it's, this razor thin of a margin of informational asymmetry. It, it's Nobody disagrees with that. Then. It's an improvement on top of gold. And I mean, for that reason alone, I mean, don't we have to use it for the money? I mean, if it's better than gold, don't we have an obligation? There's a very big difference in, in, here that you need to understand. And this is important. And I want everyone to understand this because it's real. Gold has already been, it's, gold's consensus has already been decided by nature. It is atomic number 79. We do not have that luxury. And that's what no, makes I, is, no, it is not in terms of economic and, sense. Bitcoin is 21 million Bitcoins. That is it. It's done. It's set but, in but stone. Then, hold on, the Chris? incentives, if they do not completely decohese and fall apart, enforce that absolutely. Gold is much different in the term that we don't know the supply. The access to it and the available supply changes with the price because you have you have an unknown this has nothing supply. To said. You're, 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 no, but, no, you're but it does it. because gold. I mean, he's basically saying gold is different than value. Bitcoin. If Wait. it gets more expensive, people will go mine more gold because there's always more gold to find out there. That dynamic does not exist in Bitcoin. So Kenobi, uh, you're Chris, dominating the conversation in ways that I don't think Chris, are helpful. Your Chris, insecurities Chris. are showing. This is a discussion. Chris, Let's have a discussion. So Chris. there's there is something. <laughs> there is some. So you want to say something? Yeah, get it on the mic. Yeah, Chris. Uh, in the American Revolution, we didn't have magic gold with the like scarce gold that can teleport around the world. Like that, that changes things very much. I agree, but the people and the ways we organize people are being lamented. It is immoral to talk about Hold that on. in this space. All right. And, and, and well, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the technology is Bitcoin, new. Bitcoin, it doesn't Bitcoin make people different. Carbon with its incentives. Yeah, I mean you, that's you say that together. you say that, and there is definitely some truth to it. But it is not unilaterally true because if it was, we wouldn't have developers arguing about anything. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't it's, know. it's partly, uh, yeah. Um, I would like to address that. That is completely false, DeRose. That is a result of the information asymmetry. The incentive to do what's best for you is the core factor in terms of carbon programming. You're attempting to align the, the information that they have, their specific view in terms of informational asymmetry to what you want them to see as the the peak or, or best alignment with what's in their best interest. That That is what that is. To try to program carbon is to try to shape the informational asymmetry of an individual in the direction that you want. Because that, that asymmetry of information is how you actually arrive at actions, opinions, and analysis of what is in your best interest. So Hold on one second. Let can me I just respond to that or – okay, fine. <sighs> Uh, well, just one, one second. I, I do somewhat agree with you that Bitcoin is not like gold. Today it is. Today, it, what I feel like it is. But in, in the long run, doesn't rely on these being sp spent to secure the network w within the gold currency. Bitcoin does. Like if everyone keeps holding it and once the fees are greater than the subsidy, that's we're, – we're, we're, we're back in the experimental stage because we don't know – if we're going to have enough transactions to secure them to incentivize miners to mine, that I there I agree it's not like gold, but we're not there yet. Like we're a long ways from that scenario. Digital gold is immoral. It's a good moral. It united a lot of us. I'm not saying we have to get rid of it, but it is not a literal fact. And for the people who are trying to keep the inspection of these parts of the system uh, hidden, I don't think they're doing us a service, and they're making us look stupid. Now to address oh, Shinobi's does. point. What I would say real quick is that, I mean, we could rehash that entire thing he just said, but if it was so simple and open and shut as to not be uh, argued or discussed, then we wouldn't have to ever care about Bitcoin Cash. We can all just r ignore that. All right. It'll, it'll be a non-issue. So the reason I talk about Bitcoin Cash is because there's a lot of new people that understand that events is going to get on, merged in mind and then you're going to get inflation. Well, how, hold, 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 hold on. I, that, right. Let me okay. respond to that. What does that have anything to do with what I said. I, I was you responded to Sybil asserting that incentives are the core of carbon programming, or in other words, advocating and convincing somebody to do what you're advocating for. That's that's what it is. And this is a broad generalized statement that has really no bearing on whether or not we should talk about Bcash. This is just a statement of how programming carbon, so to say, works. You control the information that is in possession of an individual to attempt to take that information and align it in what they see based Hold on, on that Mr. information Mr. Has to go. I have the as last what's in their best interest. Yeah, yeah, I got to leave in a little bit.
Mr. Hotto, you, you, how much did you say this in this hour and 40 minutes? How much did you say? I don't know. 10 minutes of it. <laughs> Yeah, so this this is format that you've advocated is not serving its function. Well, I wasn't. First of all, dude, I'm not like you. I I know you guys are recording this, but I wasn't trying to create a podcast out of this. I just wanted to have a fucking conversation and those shit. That's my whole point. Like, I wasn't trying to make this into a show or anything. But you see, this room is not a one on one discussion, and it, it completely distracted from you and I making headway. And and I'm not I'm not trying to make it like a thing where like you failed or anything like that. It's that like this is in a way uh, I think antithetical to making progress and shinobi just likes to dominate which is fine i don't mind talking to shinobi but that comes out of your time mr, no, mr. No. it was it was it was presented to us as a discussion that we're all gonna have like not just a one-on-one -on -one, to be fair well i, I don't I mean, mind this... have discussions individually or in groups but it seems as if the more people we have in a group the less that gets achieved and i like having at some level, why don't you eight. stay? Why don't you hang around here? Yeah, it's usually why, not. Why don't you? It's fucking packed. I got meetings all over the fucking place. No, I no, got, no. Like, I like Telegram. I mean, like you know how you're on Telegram in the background, how it's idle in the background. This takes less resource than Telegram. Well, because first off, we we manage our own little safe spaces. Like that's a real idea. No, I'm invited to the safe no, space. No, I mean we really don't have a safe space here. We I'm get invited all here, man. You absolutely do. do. You can't no, manage your safe spaces for very simple reasons. Entirely open to absolutely anybody. Absolutely. Dude, a bunch of us, a bunch but the, of us. Are but the morality in this room is different than the morality in the, in the Briar Patch. That's what makes this a safe space. It's not a matter of the policy. It's a matter of like the morals. So that, like if, you, for example, you put like, I don't know, Pakistanis and Indians in a room and then you like, let's talk about Kashmir. Like it's going to be a riot. And like that's like, what ends up happening in different spaces. On the, and it's good. Like well, there no, are places we, for that. I, but I mean, like I'm we, in both the reason rooms, why I hang out to Briar so. Patch is because these people that I've become friends with don't have these asinine like evaluating people ideas. We evaluate idea ideas in there. And that's like nice. We get more done that way. That's why I hang out there. Uh, that's really funny because that's usually what we do here is just work on the technicals versus and it's funny, like it seems like whenever this camp gets a bad rep, it's because someone came in and like those hot buttons were pushed, right? But I mean, that's not the way it usually works. Like I hang out in all the different rooms. Like I'm not really like I'll sit around and just watch and not even talk sometimes like a lot of us hang out and frequent whale pool too. like the, the the community here is actually pretty diverse and there actually are and has been just since the start of this chat be cashers in here like that's the way we oh, roll. Yeah, yeah, no, a real quick. I don't want to I don't want to like disparage this room. I like that it exists and I like that it discusses technicals. What we discuss in the briar patch is unabashedly carbon programming. And you guys don't like that discussion. Like, if I bring it over here, I'm gonna have Shinobi jumping on me every fucking time I say something. That's okay. No, he won't. I want Shinobi. And not if you're not if you're here like all the time and you become one of us. No, you won't. And then, and then also like assimilate. Like, Join us. No, I like you guys, and I don't even consider myself like a post to this group in any way. If you guys don't, so that's great. I I consider this like you know a part, look. Here's the deal: we're all in this together with the same goals. I fight for converting the noobs to ideas that you guys want them to have. And then you guys fight for shutting Chris up because you don't want the, like, the ignorance <laughs> to like, Dude, be destructive. You're, you're, come on, man. That whole fucking thing on the UTXO set and like Bcash, like you don't have minds, you have UTXOs. Like, who are you writing that to? Who, like, I don't First even off, get... You guys are all so programmed on this, on this Bcash thing. It's hilarious to me. That's cultural appropriation 101. Like, you, you guys have a moral that Bitcoin cannot uh, be used in no, vain. No, the reason, and I, the reason I say that is it's just, there's it's just a reason cultural for cultural appropriation, that. which I think is hilarious because I don't give a fuck. I'm not like that pious, but you guys have. But like, then a why, do you, why do you make a comment about it then? Because every single because, time we cash, you have to make a comment about it. Because it is insulting to yourselves. You're making yourselves now appear like why you is are that no insulting? Longer, how do you think you see others when they complain about cultural appropriation? I think they usually Chris, look I don't Dude. complain about cultural appropriation. I complain yes, about do. objectively false technical claims. That that is ninety nine percent of my criticism. If you lived in like Bitcoin the thirteenth century, you'd say Chris, that about here, like wearing high you heels. Could, of if course, you could it was answer objective. This, or you'd if you could answer this question, Jesus no, Chris. If you so, could... so you, so me discussing the scaling plan of shoving everything on the blockchain and the complexities of the validation cost of that is me whining about cultural appropriation and not me discussing the absurdity of a specific technical course of action. That's absurd. That assertion is absurd. Bcash is a cultural appropriation tort that is what is happening there that you can look in the textbooks this is very easy to understand you're not open to that because it's embarrassing and that's my so point. the reason i the reason i say bcash is because i want to make it clear that it's not bitcoin that's my point
But then why? Okay, so like, okay, carbon programming 101. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Who no, do you think I, is going to make a bigger difference? Somebody from within or somebody from outside? Yep, that's uh, very valid. I, I, I mean, like, I'm sort of sympathetic to these arguments, right? Like, y you guys know this. Like, it's no secret. Like, there's value to be had to kind of... There's value here in exploring this space and onboarding as many people as possible. The thing the is, the fuck like, does that have to do with uh, having, a, yeah, having a cohesive message, you know, and and kind of having the right strategy when it comes to dealing with them. Which it, one of the one of those key strategy things is keeping your enemies close. And, and, well, I mean, I honestly, you know, I talk to Raj by the way on occasions here and there on Telegram, so that's one thing. But the second thing, I don't give a fuck if people get upset if I call it Bcash. I don't even think about it. And then the fact that people get upset about it just makes me want to say even more. I don't care that you say it, but what I know is that I will get more social cohesion than you will as a result, and I'm okay with you doing you. But and it's not, but it's not working, man. Be okay with me. But it's oh, not working. I, it's been going down. It, the, Chris, what you think about it? Chris, it forms cohesion hold on. Like between these communities. It'll never happen. Hold on, Chris. It forked off at around 0.32 of Bitcoin. That's where that's when it happened. Like the price one BCH was 0.32 of one BTC. Now it's one one or something BTC. It's consistently going down. It's had pumps. Every pump is becoming less and less relevant, but it's consistently going down in every fucking metric. I don't know what you're talking about. Because this is Chris, you, politics. Like, okay, you you will never get social cohesion between these two communities at this point like i, I don't Says know who? whether it's that is whether, not written in the stars Chris, that is your cynicism i do not know whether it is due to then why do you bother genuine even attacking them? in something again i don't i make very yes, specific claims why do you about, care my question is why do you let, care so much guys, about let me let me finish. i don't but but you're not Chris, you're not converting the news I make is what the very problem is specific refutements of very specific technical claims now, in the instance of the kind of arguments I see coming from the Bcash community, I don't know whether it's genuine belief, whether it is simply monetary incentive, whether it's straight up mental illness. But overall, like Stop and Decrypt is in here right now, the, the Reddit moderator. He is a completely different person than fucking Whale Panda. Yet I see people like David Shares just out of nowhere with no evidence at all claim they are the same person. And just rapidly propagate that through their social forums. I see people like David Shares take a, a meme of mine comparing Segwit2x to the, the Galaxy Note 7, the exploding phone, the PR disaster. And when Samson Mao retweets it, claim he's making death threats to Jeff Garzik. I see almost nothing but just lies, just outright fabric or fab like fabrications to misrepresent what social interactions are. You are never going to get a cohesive social cooperation between these two groups as long as that kind of behavior goes on. And it's objectively true. It, it is outright lies that's a and lie. manipulation. You know that's a lie. Everybody knows that's a lie. There's no math in the universe that will substantiate that. This is willful ignorance. You have a moral that is causing it. No, Chris, again, I can state for a fact that Stop and Decrypt and Whale Panda are two entirely different people. There is a plethora of evidence yeah, what's a of that everywhere. And yet, baselessly, without citing a single thing, you have people all over the place claiming they're the same people. Like, the, the, that's, the, the that's objective, an objective The part that was a lie statement. was his position that you will never have some degree of cohesion or immigration from Bitcoin Cash into Bitcoin Core. Which, not, not only is that no, no, no. obviously what's possible, happen, it, Eventually, what's going to happen is going to get merge mined. I can explain why, and I can explain it's going to go through inflation. And so for what, those so, reasons, it's so why when they I come, think scam. So when they come, and, and we agree that they come, why is but it no that one's we buying, are not? But no one's buying Bcash, man. Buying it. I don't understand what, where are you seeing that? The why are we entertaining? Bcash? My point is that why, why are you entertaining Shinobi's narrative that's objectively never going to happen? This is absurd. It's not going to happen. I mean, either they're going to lose all their money or they're going to convert back to Bitcoin. We think that could happen. happen okay, so they're coming back. It. We fixed his problem. That was easy. Should we move on to more? Like Chris, if, if, Chris, they're, if they're real Chris, to did, begin with. Why, why did you talk, uh, you and John Seth were talking about the externalities of uh, Ethereum, not managing his externalities well. <laughs> so that's a technical problem with Ethereum. And, and you know, Ethereum is selling problems too. Like, it's you need a fucking SSD to run a node now. Like, so. What, is like, that a question, or are you just telling us that? that yeah, I understand. Just, yeah, it's a rhetorical question. Like, if, like, can you put a question mark I, at I the end, please? I have technical problems with Bcash because it just doesn't scale well. 
doesn't stay like no it's a lie man they think about the white paper and they know damn well that there's no 21 million in the white paper and they're going to use that to fucking inflate the coin supply once there's not enough fees to incent the miners to mine and everybody goes back to bitcoin it's going to happen there's no debating that so in my Mr. Hunter, your time is limited. Just like a couple of quick things that I can run it off, if that's okay. Yeah. Like, we have a discussion yeah, when you're gone. Just think about it. Um, look, I, I don't accept that the noobs are unmanageable. I think we I have at least established at some level that there is not only a hierarchy, but there is some degree of processes here, that there is a carbon engineering element that can be considered. If that's the case, what we need to do is be a little bit more cohesive in our support for the hierarchy. And uh, I, I think Which that the noble want? members... Who? Uh, hold Who on. The? Which... The noble members of Bitcoin Core should be respected as a group. We don't have to necessarily put them in a first through last place, but we can at least say these are the authorities we trust. These are the authorities you should trust, and that would be an amazing start, and that'll do a lot of things. It'll solve Why? a lot of problems. All right, hold on, Chris. But I'm going to no, disappoint that's, you that's, right that's, now. Shinobi, hold on. Shinobi, hold on, okay. hold on, hold on. I'm going to disappoint you right now. Shinobi Monkey and myself are both admins on the Core Slack channel. Does that mean that the noobs have to listen to us? Are we core? Well, we can have that question next if you'd like, because that's a fun question to ask. But my point <laughs> is that if we establish an affinity, an affinity where we all strike positive balances to it, there's the basic psychology, it will then buttress this belief that will be a bastion of quality in the Bitcoin space that will resolve almost all of your issues that you guys obviously have. But I don't have any like, issues, I'm, I'm not interested in, in saying, listen to this guy. I will assess an idea if I find that idea suitable, safe, and sound, I will advocate that idea. And people can decide based on how many and who is actually advocating that specific idea whether they want to support that. I absolutely will never just blindly tell people, listen to this guy. Because but you're hey, legend in your own mind. Nobody listens to you. Your profile guys, is designed to I'll offend be, people. Back. So who cares what you have to say to the noobs? Quite a lot of people do. Your friends do, not the noobs, because you're persuading them. You're not persuading the noobs. Um, based on what? I mean, it's it's very evident to me, but we can like ask, you know, random people. Hey, who who likes the opinions of Shinobi Monkey? Who likes this guy? And who likes the opinions of? And then we can pick any number of other people in the space, like I don't, I mean, Vinny Lingham, for that matter, if you want. And well, my Vinny's suspicion is that Vinny Lingham probably has more fans than you do. Well, um, go back and look at that interview that me and John did with him because I – like that was almost all of the comments uh, pretty much buttressing mine and John's statements and opinions. Like, you didn't address the point. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. I'm not saying that you're incapable. No, no. I'm not I, saying I, that I'm a good person. I just specifically addressed the point of whether or not I convince people outside of my circle of friends. And one of the largest exposures I've had outside of that group – I convinced a lot of people. This is why you're a legend in your friends. own mind here. Like you, you seem to believe that because no, you were no, using no, arguments to speak no, to your friends, okay, hold on, the hold out on. group is attracted to them, and they are not. And it's very obvious to anybody. It's really like, what, what are you doing here? How do you you know said this? that my statement it had nothing to do with refuting your assertion. It directly did. And I'm looking at the commentary of people I do not know commenting on my arguments and ideas in a vast majority favorable way. Like how is that not a refutement on a small scale in an isolated environment of, of your statement? I mean, it is a refutement in a small scale. <laughs> that back. was definitely the I'm case, back. I agree. All right, do we want, what do we wanna talk about? I don't wanna talk about any number of things. Like I, I gave another 20 minutes I've allocated, which is an hour over what I, I so, I'm more than happy to talk about anything. Uh, I don't know, what are you fucking bothering me about? Let me think. Can, can we talk about the brand, right, the, the value of reigning in the brand? Uh, do we want to talk about um, Bitcoin rule sets and the interoperability or lack thereof? Do we want to talk about Monero? Oh, versions. I want to know versions. I want, I, I want a question I always wanted to ask you. Um, you, you always say that different implementations might will go out of sync at some point. And in order for them to become again, they would have to go to core. Um, what do you say about the versions in Bitcoin? Like if they go sync, which one is Bitcoin? Because right now the newest version, which is 16.1, has only a node count of 612, but 16.0 has 16.0 has 4019. So which one in that scenario, what would be core? 
So I, I think that the easy answer is that you have like hard versions and then you have Bitcoin core rule set versions on top of that. And clearly we all as ascribe to the belief that um, the hard fork version is itself of a more maximal compliance than the uh, individual rule set release. And I, th I think that's fair enough. So we then I think can say, okay, everybody is on hard fork version three and they are on uh, rule set version, you know, whatever from there. And those managing, talking about in those terms, I think makes it a little bit more meaningful. Um, and it's less important to anybody what the Bitcoin version is so much as what the hard fork version is. Chris, why do you insist on the, uh, the, the, that core pretty much takes a position of authority in this space? Is that pretty much your solution to deal with this specific issue? I mean, I look at every other net standard. You look at like the IETF and they have like United Nations meetings with, with like how's, obvious how's so okay, okay, let, let me re, Let me rephrase that. Do, do you think that the only way to deal with the operability issues and potential consensus failures between versions of a single implementation is to put somebody in charge? Well, the market thinks that because we can look at the running nodes and what they do. So like well, I, we that's... can talk about what I, I believe and I can absolutely tell you that that's what I believe. But more so than that, we can talk about what the other people believe and the other people believe that. that. So like, why is it even relevant? But you have, so you, you, have haven't, so on, you, you haven't dove into simplicity at all. Um, I don't, I don't know what that means, but it, I would it's hope not. The, the scripting language and uh, virtual machine interpreter proposed by Blockstream, but would allow a complete mathematical proof and specification so that outside of metadata consensus rules, such as database lock limits, uh, size constraints on pieces of data, you can mathematically define the specified behavior of what script is supposed to do. I have not looked at that, but it's probably impossible for some very easy reasons. Okay, Chris. Do you want to learn them or no? Shoot. Well, we have things like hard uh, that come up on occasion, unplanned. We have things like mining concerns. You can't formally define the economics that may change over time relating to fixed cost, variable cost mining. So I, I think that's a great effort. I think it's awesome. And I think it can only help. But I think we're kidding ourselves if we think the economics aren't in some state of flux. And th this is a return to the politics of inevitability. No, but again, we're, we we're talking about consensus failure, not a human-initiated fork. We're talking about two clients validating yeah, a series a... of scripts and coming to different conclusions on the validity solely based on the script operating. We can't present righteousness in the change of context because I think it was presented was how Bitcoin itself as a whole in its face of the United Nations should be considered under the rubric of an authority. Now, if you want to say consensus is what we should talk about, fine. But if you asked me to the, the degree that I see value in defining an authority, that was my no, original I, answer. I, I explicitly asked you in the context of dealing with the potential of versions of a single client falling out of consensus and how would you deal with that? I, 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 that's, that's, such a, that's very uninteresting to me. Uh, I don't. I don't know what are my options. Like I would just do what core tells me. How's that? So you don't. You don't think at all that it's a, a vital piece of information that there is actually work being done to have a mathematical certainty of script, like of there being a mathematical definition of a script's validity or not, leaving only data structure, uh, metadata constraints as far as consensus rules outside of that mathematical definition, which are much more trivially isolated and definable than the actual complications of script executing and being validated. I think you're wasting the channel's time. I've emphatically expressed support for that. <laughs> All right, who well, else wants to shoot off? No, like, so I, I just want to get back Back to the whole fucking um, version, because we've got people still running from version from number zero, what was it, eight, nine, which was 2012. So, like, backwards compatibility, man, is important. Like, I know you don't think that's important. These core developers putting your trust in are telling you that hard forks will split a chain, even with their consensus, even if they go... The developer consensus. They're not looking for developers' consensus. They're looking for node operators to be upgrading. If they know that not everyone is going to be able to upgrade, that they're not even bothering at looking at a hard fork. That's why every single upgrade to date has been a soft fork. None of it's been a hard fork. 
I, I think I've only hard fork said if only hard fork the, the neuroticisms the neuroticisms uh, you know like, like we can conter- contain those I think I've always said that the hard forks are absolutely and always preferable but what I don't want to have happen is uh, the inability to even discuss contingency plans to uh, plan on uh, preliminary support for upgrades to hard forks to be off the table even if only so that we have more bar- bargaining leverage at the table with mining coalitions um, but I think that hard fork should be on the I table, think and I think we should discuss weight. how we would I think do you're those. Giving, I think you're giving miners too much weight because, again, if 148.81 didn't succeed, I would agree with you. I'd be worried. Would say that the the incentives were they're just weren't aligned. Like Satoshi fucked up, but it did work, and there was no split. Like miners. They don't validate, man. Like that's no operators. Miners could mine invalid blocks, and they're not getting paid. I don't know if you remember this, but but in in the first halving, there's a bunch of miners that continued mining. They try to continue mining a fucking fifty block uh, fifth block reward. The only thing that happened was other nodes just dismissed it as invalid blocks. In the end of the day, the buyer dictates. It's that is buying Bitcoin. It's not the miners. Well, the people that dictate are probably the exchanges, and we can talk about that. Um, All right. So, but- like, I used to be, I used to hang out with Phil almost every day for about two years on Whalepool. I promise you, the exchanges are not dictators. It's the, when they're getting fucking hundreds and hundreds of emails, and that whole like classic thing was going on, and then the BU thing, they were getting just overwhelmed with people like you know some people withdrawing money some people like it, it, it was crazy it's not the exchanges man in the end of the day it's Does the person the entrance that's buying of Bitcoin. force in the equation change the equation that yes as of right now that type of force we haven't seen and if enough politicians are holding bitcoin i don't think we'll ever see it okay fine i think that the equation has changed and i think we can discuss it and i don't think it's immoral and i don't think it's disgusting to talk about because if we plan ahead we can i believe that this will work so if we plan ahead all we got to do is anticipate and then we iterate and if hard forks are what's needed for that then that's on the table ready to be done but you're not going to get consensus within the development community forget about every node operator haven't you introduced to me the need to present this as an urgent threat what what urgent threat do we face? What's right urgent now? threat? Everything necessary can be done in a soft fork. There can be rolling hold on, hold on. Wait, discussion this, this might be... on technical debt being cleaned up. So what's the threat right now? Hold on, hold on, be, hold on. If we didn't get Segwit in, yes, a hundred percent, there would have been a lot more hard forks that were that were needed to get these things done. The fact that we got and this is one of the I think one of the fights. This is what it was about. Was that once you get Segwit in, now to the point where you could even soft fork middle transactions. I don't know if you saw, I, I tagged you in that tweet that uh, Peter Will was saying was that you could have competent transactions with a soft fork extension block. So like all of these things that we needed a hard fork before SegWit, we, we really don't need them anymore. Okay, that's all fine and good. But I, I just wanted to point out that you said on Twitter that the only way that we would probably be able to support a hard fork would be under duress. And yeah. then I introduced the fact that there's force, and then we agreed that there could be a situation where we have duress. And so then my answer to you is, well, then doesn't that satisfy the, the viability of these types yeah, of Yeah, but that's not just the developers that are going to be asking for a hard fork. It's everybody because, you know, Carbon remember, programming one, for the win! We did it! Yeah, but nobody wants, nobody we wants have to have consensus! Yeah, no. that's uh, because I've been consensus. all about this. I've been all about this for a long time now. I've been... I've been trying to beat this into people's heads for, you know, starting a year and a half ago, two years ago, that like we must, you know, remain open to hard forks despite the, you know. Hold on. Time out. Listen, if there was something that was threatening your money personally, will you not do something to protect it? You're trying to validate the morality of hard forking, and I'm telling you, I don't have that moral, so I don't really care. Like you can just you can persuade yourself any way you want. I'm already there. You're but with it's me. About, now dude, you got to retroactively. Incentives. If you're if you're saying that incentives here is what dictates things, I agree. If your money is under threat, going to do what you're going to do to save it. Well, Mister Shinobi is very quick to shut down the carbon programming element, and it's, it seems like we, no, we've but achieved if, some if of this. No, but if that now. happens, if that happens, no, it's not, Chris. 
All I've okay. done is clarify Every one of our interviews is the same. The it starts off with you yeah, jumping out Chris, the gate, you and you swear up and things. down that this hold thing, on, that on, the on, sky wait, isn't wait, wait, blue. But and that's that how we come after it. Said this. You've always told Chris, me that the sky on. is blue. Chris, Every fucking no, interview. No, I swear Chris, to God. What happens is you start an interview misrepresenting my opinions and my past statements, and then steer the conversation into the direction where I finally get across that no, you are misrepresenting my opinions. Here's what they are. You go, wow, you've changed your opinion. Finally, when that has always been my opinion, and you've simply started off misrepresenting. I will tell you. I will I'll let tell the audience you that, decide, and I encourage right, anybody yeah, to tell me what the they think. Decide. Yes, but I will tell you, if that day occurs, it's not going to be a good fucking day for the price of Bitcoin. So, like, it 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 will suffer confidence loss. Um. You know, people you. lose money. That that's that. But you know, you buy the fucking dip, and then it is what, what it is. Well, that's that's what it has just, to, by the cycle. way, this is why I like the Monero scam. I just want to point out there is that it's an oh, easy wait, place to test these things. All right, like, so, we don't have to get into that because I got to get out of here in like another five minutes. But I just want to point out, Chris, I got, that there are I nice get, staging grounds for these discussions. I got no, yeah, I, I, I like just, Monero I, for those reasons as well, Chris. It's, it's a, a scam. canary you have to pull in the coal Monero scam. No, it's it's a it's a project that is a nice canary in the coal mine for a lot of different things. Well, but you've heard all the problems. One of but those... you've heard all the problems lately, right? It's only I mean, a this, scam this, this, if Fluffy Pony broke the CT range proofs and just uses it as a free money printing machine. <laughs> well, well, maybe it's not a scam, and I stand defeated. I see some people on the channel here telling me it's a scam, and I, I'm I'm with them, like Civil over here. I think. Hold on. So no, there is there is like something right before this last hard fork before we had like you know monero classic i was with you like i was uh i was a monero fan but um if you think monero is like private and fungible right now i don't know man you you got to look into it right now because well, that's reasonable it, one scam M monero does serve to uh, to kind of work at that uh carbon programming level right it's one of those interesting things no we're talking where, about you know, an actual yes. problem right now so scam. 100 yeah, yeah. percent. yeah but yeah, right so, now simple you want to go here and tell what the problem is well like the ring signatures uh, yeah. being spent on both chains and that being yeah. bad and like uh if you got enough people using a join market it'd be better than ring signatures so right now what's happening is Anybody that's claiming coins on Monero is ruining the privacy for everybody else that's not even claiming coins. And that's not being talked about. I have seen that. I don't have the ability to evaluate that. I, I don't really care if you don't invest in it. I think that's a wise thing to not invest in. But I like the community. I like the project. And I like Dude, that's watching how people it. go to jail. That's a big pro You don't think that's a huge problem? When everyone, you're, like the currency they're using is fungible and private, they're going on buying drugs, thinking that they're, it's everything's peachy, and this whole time, all their transactions could be de-anonymized? No, I, I certainly think that's a problem, and I think that it deserves attention, and I think that it, it should absolutely be discussed. I don't have any problem with that. I still think that the project is interesting, if only because, like, like we, like Scam 2.1 told us... you said project, not scam. I, I did, you're absolutely... Well, I'm, using, I'm, I'm being culturally sensitive in here. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, it just doesn't have to be like this morally charged issue all the damn time. So fucking, such a drag, so much tight button. No, my problem state. is just that you have the fucking Monero kids that are coming out and like using Greg's fucking technology, just, you know, incorporating our Monero, which is fine. But the guy that created the fucking thing is telling you that it's not ready and you just implemented. I think it is a little scammy. But that's Especially why I call it, I think we should call it the scam to protect our own, you know, uh, in, persons and you know our own identities in the space. Just make it nice and easy. That's Can a hard a nice... fork fix this problem? But no, but the reason I say it's a scam is because people think that it's fungible and private right now, and there's a good chance that it's not. I'm with you, fam. No, they made they made an improvement. They uh, added uh, HD wallets, fucking finally. Like, um, that was a huge problem. Where like you'd have off chain analysis. Like, say you're sending from Shapeshift to the same Monero address all the time. You're you're linking those uh, Bitcoin UTXOs, whatever. It's I mean, a this is what I understand too is it's a moving target. Where... Like, yeah, like, it's inf I mean, these things are iterative. So, like, Tor has problems historically. It'll have problems again. Bitcoin has had problems historically in terms of like fungibility, and then it just was like kind of a we didn't get into it anymore. Something like that. I don't know what the narrative would be, but like that's the idea. I'm okay with that. There, right, there's, well. this, there's this pretense in the space, Mr. Hoddle, that everything has to be done perfect the first time around, and that's 100% true in Bitcoin. But it's not as true elsewhere, and 
I think that we have a little bit of learning that we can do in Bitcoin so that if and when it, there's a need to do a hard fork or even if and when there's a need to negotiate at the United Nations, we have a source of representation that makes sense and that is my, in, usable. In my opinion, the only way that's going to happen is that enough people in the United Nations are holding Bitcoin. I don't think you're going to be able to... It's, we it, got to send a delegate to achieve that. It's either you have kids, you know, like they're like the politicians that are right now, their kids maybe holding Bitcoin and they become politicians. Like in 20 years, man, these old fucks are dead. And you're going to have a lot of new people that are run for office. And I'm pretty sure you know some of them. Happen. Roger Veer is going to do the job. He's happy to be the delegate. <laughs> so if that's if that's you, if your inaction accomplishes that goal, I blame you a little bit, Mr. Hoddle, because I've put you on the hierarchy and that's your place to put your foot down. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. <laughs> Well, it's, it's already happened in varying forms, and we make fun of him every time we see it, but really we internalize the anger that we have that we don't have a representative. And I we see this on like TV networks. We see this you know, in newspaper articles. And you know what? I got to hand credit to Roger. This is one of the reasons why I like Bitcoin Cash, because he does these things when the market asks him to. And like we would shame people like, like Adam Back from doing that, and it's unacceptable to me. Why? Stop Nobody it, shames Adam for talking. The, the only issue he's scared with Adam, of you guys. No, he's not. I no, talk to not, him dude. on a I'm regular friends. basis. I'm, I am. Uh, yeah, he may we be your personal friend, but him. he is scared of the network of Bitcoiners who would reject to having a representative. Okay, and that's reasonable. And we got to de-risk that. We have to say, look, we trust Bitcoin Core, and we trust Bitcoin Core to tell us who a good representative is. But yeah, in the United dude, Nations. But yes, anybody but can go represent yeah, but Bitcoin. Absolutely yeah, anybody. I'm core. And that's if, not if acceptable, people feel Shinobi. Like they have I don't done like a bad that. Job, they will I don't. But that's how it is. I, it, that's it, how is it, until, is. it is until the hierarchy speaks up and says that's not acceptable. Look, I'm the guy who can tell you how this is done. I oh, own feminist Chris, you want, oh, same okay. thing goes the same sense. fucking Coins problem. I got it. Feminism same was a, a decentralized identity, Monero. and I've declared myself the commander in chief of it. No one fucking can test me. And the thing I is hilarious. See. Okay. And you know what? I don't want that happening here because that's exactly what Roger Beer's doing. Nobody takes by seriously. doing nothing. And like, no, the, there is so much like no, the, the exact same situation that exists here. We got here for Bitcoin for president Decaf. in the channel right now. And you know what? That exactly like, that strategy is going to end up working. And I don't like want Chris, that to work. I want Chris. the Bitcoin core team to do it. I don't want to be the guy to do it. Chris but I'm core, man. I'm the exact I'm an admin. same situation, situation so. exists in Bitcoin Cash. It's not just Roger. You have lunatics like Roger Ver. You have people like uh, Shinobi, Jimmy you Noygen. need to grow there, up a little bit. There, there are hierarchies. Decentralization has happened before we Craig solved this Wright. problem. Nobody shows up for the decentralized geography that was the 13 colonies and says as president in, in 2018 because they Dude, solved the these problems. Peer, peer to peer money, man. This is a different world we're living in right now, man. This is peer to peer money. Like you're li like you're talking about it is a world before it existed, and I would agree but with you. You already admit there's a hierarchy. You just won't name it yes, because you have a moral a hierarchy. I, yes, I like. I, I will yes. listen to what Luke says, and but that's what I disagree with. What Luke fluxes. says. Like constantly, right, look, you can't isolate piece. something you guys, that is in a constant state. You guys of are going to change your mind. You're going to change your mind in maybe six months, maybe a year, and you're going to say, you know what? You've seen us, Chris was wrong Luke, as always, and there's a hierarchy, and he's Luke, a representative. Right? That's what you're going to fucking you, say. I know it. No, see, it's not going to happen, Chris. Like you can't tap down and definitively define in concrete terms something that is in constant flux. Okay, well, that's I guess why America is is not in constant flux. Can we end this, this interview now? It's not that I'm offended, but it's, it's at the time interview. This is, you're like you're I appreciate Bitcoin to a country, man. It's not a country. Well, you don't have you not realized yet that America is a religion? It only exists in your head. It's not a real idea. It's a decentralized word. It means roughly liberty. Nobody knows what it is, but they all rally around it. And because of that faith, there's a contingency that you have internalized to be objectively true, but it's not. It's just subjective. All right, we can do the my, same thing with my Bitcoin. theory. My theory is that people are around Bitcoin because they want to get rich, and that's the one thing everybody has in common. How about that? Well, that's a start. That's also why people joined America, by the way. Now, I think people joined America for I, other reasons, but... No, they were the tax without representation, and it was inherently a greed-based proposition. It was formatted to them in a virtuous way, but the principal matter was that of independence for the purpose of profit, okay? Like, it's just very easy. We've had these problems before, guys. Open it up a little bit. The type butt is not helping. Loosen the butt a little bit, have creative conversations, and before you know it, we are going to be representing ourselves at the United Nations. Do you do you hate Satoshi Man? Of course not. Okay, so like Chris, you just said <laughs> we're going to be representing ourselves in the United Nations. Is that not in complete contradiction than a single representative being appointed? Like you, you just contradicted yourself.
I, I think America represents itself at the United Nation, and if that is a contradiction, I, I don't no, think an, so. An individual or a select group of individuals represents America at the United Nations. Okay, then that's what we need a Bitcoin. Like, you can frame it any way you oh, want. Oh, man. This is a problem. <laughs> I just I I uh, remember something. You should get in touch. In um, oh my God, what was that guy named who rage quit? He was all about like he was so pissed off that James about mining. What's what was his name? James Demore. James Demore? No, 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 no. no. We are not talking about the guy. Who got James D'Angelo. James D'Angelo. That's it. That's James it. D'Angelo. That's the one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you got to start. You got to go back to him because you you right he now are he resonated. Me. He won't. He won't talk to me. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that bridge is burned. <laughs> Because right now, what you're saying is basically what he was saying back then. Okay, well, then, then he was right. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't see it that way, but, like, you can. What did he All want? Right. He wanted gotta... nodes? Mine, there's no, nodes look, or something, look, something. It's, it's not that much different than what Shinobi already said in the first place. We have a fluid hierarchy, right? So why is it so crazy for us to kind of, like, in that fluid bunch group of people to decide randomly like who does certain things like that all i'm saying time is time. This like, who wants to right volunteer now. to do it it can even be voluntary we just need to come up with a i don't more want kinda... this job let me make this clear i don't want to be the one to have oh, this job stop it then you never can take it you don't stop have it. it you won't have it like it's <laughs> like dude you like you accuse Great, me but of there's being, a power vacuum you there's a power vacuum it will be filled and you know that because roger beer is doing it Chris, Dude, you accused anything. me I see him on of TV being a legend in all the time. And that's all right, everybody, everybody, everybody so that, shut up. So that substantiates this happening. Chris, you can't you accused, deny that. Okay, okay, I'm going to keep talking until you let me talk. You accused me of being a legend in my own head earlier. Like, you are the epitome of irony when you sit here and talk like this and make these claims about yourself while trying to... Throw what that claims that I don't want to have this job? Somebody else, like as if I you don't have want this it, job, as if you ever will have it. You're just another jackass okay, like me great. out there advocating. That's uh, it. Somebody in the channel came here and asked for Chris for president. Like this is what happens. People ask because you to do you these things. What are your friends, man? <laughs> Fine. But, but you take the job. I really don't care. I agree. Chris, the, that the Chris. job title doesn't exist, and it never will. Chris, at the end of the day, but, Bitcoin but works, man. Not Bitcoin, Bitcoin works. If you don't like how it works, fine. But it I works. love how it works. I know where it's going. That's what you guys are probably like, right, you're well, laughing when at. We that. get there. We get there. You give me a DM. You, you tweet at me and you'd be like, I don't want to be I right. So. I want. I don't care Come about on, like, attribution. I would no. love for you to be right. That's your system. You guys hang your self esteem on being right. Every I don't. prediction you've made in this space has <laughs> oh, just been man. wrong in your I agree. entire history. In I 100% space. agree. Bitcoin Tell was everybody black, you black, know. And they don't care about what I say. Bitcoin was black people. What was it saying? Bitcoin was black people money, right? What okay. else is if you want to uh, disbelieve that, I, I uh, really don't care. Dude, I, I, don't I want, want to bust your balls. To I don't want to bust your balls, but you gotta understand it. Like when I was listening to you before, I was listening to you before because you're entertaining. Like you well, made first me off, laugh. that John said said that. And I, I want to take credit for it just because it's wrong. And then second off, you <laughs> haven't talked to you haven't talked to ATM operators, and I'm telling you no, what I, they were I, telling I, us at the time. No, I agree, I agree, but they weren't the ones that were providing it. That was peanuts. It was nothing. That's okay. not like it was a very very minor. But yeah, who's using it as money? <laughs> who, who is using it as money? Yeah, but you can't <laughs> unless on. you That's have so people. Stupid. Unless you have people holding it. Unless you have people holding it, more people holding it than selling it. You it, the price is not going to go up. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Chris, I, 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 I started with like, my claim being wrong, which wasn't my claim, which was now right, and that now I need to understand that the other people hold. And I'm fine with that, but I gotta go. Okay, guys. All right, man. Take Let's it call easy, it a night. I appreciate your time. Uh, there's a number of you who I would wouldn't mind discussing things further, even Shinobi Monkey at some point. Although he fucking Jesus <laughs> Christ, man. Yeah. Um. In any case, <laughs> you've been unblocked, and let's see how long it takes before you end up blocked again. I hope it is never. And if you like, you got you 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 like, tie up your your fucking like. Uh, you I'm engage with it. me, Chris. Like I, 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 I never seek too. an interaction with you okay. on Twitter. You well, constantly okay. tag me, Perfect. and then I interact. So okay. Yeah, man. That Fine. was the thing. That's that's the thing. You're the fourth for tagging us. I'm well, like, I tag you, Mr. Hollow, because oh I've got a mission God, with you. Every fucking day, something. Not, well, you lately, because I, you, I, you, you, I need you to change your morals, and you're going to do it, but that's another matter. All right, man, good luck. Good well, night, I, party I appreciate people. all the work you all do. Thank you for having me on, and uh, you have a good night. Take care, man. Later, guys. Chris.